There's an earthquake today in uh, Epicenter was New Jersey. And the crazy thing about it is Trump's golf resort was the epicenter, like basically next to the epicenter. But come on, like considering the size of this earthquake is a 4.8. But the how far it reached Trump, it's like Trump's golf resort in Bedminster was the epicenter. And so, of course, we now have to discuss whether we think it was a Chinese super weapon causing this Russian or perhaps the Democrats. I'm kidding, by the way, but it's Friday and it's a slow news week. So I decided perhaps there's something that not enough people are talking about and doesn't generate enough conversation online. And that issue is, of course, Israel. So instead, we're going to talk about that because uh, Candace, oh, 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 we got to slow down. So Andrew Schultz says Ben Shapiro can't debate anybody but college liberals. So Candace Owen says, I would like to debate Ben Shapiro. So Ben Shapiro says, OK, let's debate. Now they've agreed and they're trying to figure out when, a, a time and place. Ben Shapiro says Nashville Monday. Candace Owen says, I won't do it on the Daily Wire. My name got floated for potential moderator. I, I volunteered. So what we're, I, w- I really want to talk about this issue. Um, I think it's interesting why Candace and Ben are debating. And I don't know, maybe having a discussion on it may actually make me not a good moderator for the debate, considering we're going to have a conversation Friday before it could potentially even happen. We'll talk about that. We'll talk about, of course, the earthquake that hit uh, New York, New Jersey, and uh, what, what, what omen uh, comes with this uh, epicenter being at Trump's golf resort. And then uh, I love it. They got a bunch of conspiracy theories about the solar eclipse. So it's Friday night. We're going to ha- have fun. We're going to hang out. Before we get started, my friends, head over to castbrew.com to buy coffee. Why? It's our coffee company. And all of the proceeds for Cast Brew Coffee are going back into the company investing in our expansion of physical locations. That's the goal. I'd love it if every shopping mall, every strip mall in this country had a Casper location. You know why? Because then when soccer mom comes in to pick up her iced mocha latte, I guess you wouldn't call it a mocha latte. You call it iced mocha. She's walk, she walks up and she says, and you give me an extra pump of chocolate. And while she's waiting on the TV, on the wall, you've got a variety of independent media sources. Perhaps it's Candace Owens or Ben Shapiro or Tim Cast Rowell or Stick Sex and Hammer or Steven Crowder. Maybe you don't like some of them, but we're going to have a variety of personalities and, and faces. The idea is we create a physical space that allows the conversations we think are important to permeate into that general sphere. That's the goal. I think we're going to get there. Our first location's in Martinsburg. So buy Cast Brew Coffee. I'll say it again, like all of the pro, all, all the profits, 100% of the profits, we have not taken anything out. It is just going right back into the company, reordering more product and helping develop the new space. So uh, if you want to support us in that endeavor, also head over to TimCast.com. Click join us if you'd like to become a member and support our work directly because this show is made possible thanks in part to viewers like you. Uh, As a member, you get access to our Discord server where you can network with other people online. And the purpose of these physical locations and the Discord is because networking is the most powerful tool in winning the culture war. Meeting people, sharing ideas, creating things. This is what we have to do. So uh, you can support our work and network with others by becoming a member. No members only show tonight. It's Friday. But you can smash that like button, subscribe to this channel, share the show with your friends. We've got a couple people joining us tonight. Our guest tonight is John Nolte. Who are you? What do you do? I uh, work for uh, Breitbart News. I've been there since uh, 2008, and I write uh, three editorials a day and call it a day. It's a great job. I'm a very greatest job in the world I have. Well, all right. Actual Justice Warrior has returned. Yes. Uh, <laughs> I'm just like this morning. I am a YouTuber. I've been doing it since 2016, and I make one to two videos a day, except when I take days off. Libby's here. <laughs> Libby's here. That's me. I'm Libby Emmons. I'm with the Post Millennial. Glad to be hanging out. I'm in like a lightning rod. What's happening, brothers and sisters? Crossland's in the house. Coming at you live. He is. Having a good Friday. I'm actually really enjoyed talk about uh, lightning and volcanoes and earthquakes. Yeah, and all, uh, Monday's going to be fun. I was going to scream out, cast this brew, is- while, you were sh- while you were shouting. I like that stuff. Just so everyone knows, if you don't know already, I'm a It's a good coffee. Huge Appalachian fan. Nice. This is going to be the last show we do before the the great eclipse swallows up this nation. That's so right. it could be the end of days. That's episode 999 on Monday, by the way. We got Surge pressing the buttons. Yep, I'm here, y'all. Uh, ready when you are. All right, let's just... Uh, you know, we were originally going to talk about the earthquake, but this is fun. And the conversation before the cameras even turned on got pretty good. So I was like, let's just talk about Candace, Ben Shapiro, Israel, anti-Semitism, and, and what this whole debate's about. So here's how it starts. You got this clip from Andrew Schultz. Anomaly tweets, Andrew Schultz realizes Ben Shapiro is only good at debating college liberals and can't win debates against serious competition. I will play the clip for you now and you can hear what he had to say. Candace, yeah. she's not yeah. afraid of nobody. She will say whatever the she's fuck she smart wants to say. She will debate any yeah. single person. She'll go out there and do it, mm-hmm. right? Ben Shapiro is dating co- uh, debating college kids. 
Yeah. Let's just be honest, yeah. right? It's like anytime he debates somebody who's like worthy, he either gets washed or bare minimum stalemate. I've never seen him actually win a debate against somebody who's like educated in the matter. Can so in response to this, Candace Owen says, I would like to debate Ben Shapiro on Israel and the current definition of anti-Semitism. Can somebody make that happen? To which Ben Shapiro responded, sure, Candace, I texted you on February 29th offering this very thing. Let's do it on my show this Monday at 5 p.m. at our studios in Nashville. 90 minutes live streamed. Uh, I believe Ben went on to say, I am now signing off. Oh, okay, okay. Well, there's, there's, there's a little bit more in the drama before we, we get into it. Candace says, I'm sure you can appreciate why I prefer to keep this off the Daily Wire platform, as well as the true reason why we were never able to make any discussion happen. Let's choose a neutral, trustworthy platform. I vote Patrick Bet David. To which Ben Shapiro responds, Candace, I can see why you'd want to hide behind a moderator, particularly one who said we should rename our company the Daily Jewish Wire just yesterday. No. One-on-one, -on -one, <laughs> Monday at 5 p.m. We can sit down and have a healthy debate like adults, and we'll live stream it on X and YouTube. Take it or leave it. As to the true reason you didn't respond to my offer to sit with me, sit with you and discuss these issues publicly or privately back in February, I have no idea what the hell you're talking about. He then said, I am now signing off for Shabbat. I plan to be in Nashville for this conversation on Monday. So this all starts with, of course, Andrew Schultz saying Ben Shapiro can't debate. I don't agree with Schultz on this one. I think he's isolated. There's there's uh, copious amounts of Ben Shapiro, you know, dishing it out to college liberals who ask him these questions. But also Ben Shapiro has sat down for numerous discussions. He does the Sunday special. He has conversations and debates with tons of people all the time. I don't, I'm not saying he's the greatest debater in the world, but the idea that he's only ever successful against college liberals, I, I disagree with. But uh, I don't know what you guys, if you guys want to jump in and we'll just. I, I, I think he would, ha I think he would do great in the debate on Israel because he's right. I think that would help him enormously is that his position on it is the right position. Well, what is that position? That the war in Gaza is a just war, that the only moral outcome of the war is, and I'm going to use this word deliberately, is the extermination of Hamas, and that those who are calling for ceasefires, those who are saying, are blaming, you know, like these, these aid workers, is Israel... Did they make a mistake? Are they responsible for that mistake? Yes. But are, is, are they morally responsible? No. Hamas is morally responsible because they started the war. So that gives, in my opinion, I, he, he's correct on the debate. And I don't see how someone can morally say that what Israel is doing is wrong. Because what they're doing is needed, needs to be done or more people are going to die in the future. How, how, did, how do you... How did the World Central Kitchen thing happen? How do you accidentally target three separate vehicles in different areas and kill a bunch of aid workers? I, that I don't know. But, it, but if you start a war, which is what Hamas did, innocent people are going to die. I don't think for a second that Israel targeted innocent people. Number one, why would they? What's the, what's the only thing it could do is hurt them, which of course well, it has. Well, they did target innocent people. The question is, not, I mean, deliberately, right? Was it an right. accident or of otherwise? Course, I think obviously it was an accident. What what's the upside to killing innocent people deliberately? It, there's no upside. The aid workers, the upside is they don't get the food and water to the people they're trying to exterminate. But if they kill those people, I mean, there's all kinds of stuff going in there to help the people in Gaza, to help the civilians. We hope. So knocking out 12 aid workers is not going to make a huge difference in what's going in there. All it's going to do is what's happened to Israel, what we all know was going to happen to Israel, which is Biden turned against them and public opinion turned against them. There's no upside to killing those aid workers. One of the thoughts I had while you were explaining that is that it, because Hamas started the war, Israel has the right to kill no, civilians. No, no, or no I didn't say that. It's not their fault. It, they were Their hand was forced. So I disagree because if a country were to like invade my borders and start a war and then I go total war on them and start bombing their cities and killing them, I don't have the right to blame them for me killing all those civilians. I made that choice. But you, but you, you have, Israel has a moral obligation to exterminate Hamas. They have to do it. And that's going to save lives. It's like dropping bombs on Japan, atomic bombs on Japan. That was a moral thing to do. It ended the war and it saved lives. And if you let Hamas go on, especially after what happened October 7th, you're going to see a lot more civilians. It's going to be like Iraq and Afghanistan, 20 years of hell. Civilians, this, 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 this immoral, moral war, 
that you let go on for decades and decades. So my, my concern, could, couldn't they go to uh, where, where? Where's the where's the uh, leadership? We got the Hamas leadership currently at. Aren't they in like uh, Qatar? A bunch of them are in Qatar. Yeah. Yeah. So why doesn't the, why doesn't the U.S. and Israel just actually go and put them in cuffs? Uh, I don't. I don't think it's that easy. I mean, if they hide among civilians, plus you got to get. Oh, they're rid not. Of, they're like. I'm pretty sure these are public facing people who who get. Who, like one guy went on TV. Plus, you have to take away their ability to wage war again, and that's what they're doing going into Gaza because it's not. You know, it's not. We don't have hospitals. We have hospitals built on top of of weaponry. That's the stuff you have to get rid of. It's like the Nazis. You have to not not only get rid of Hitler, you have to get rid of Nazis, you have to get rid of Nazism. You have to take away their ability to ever wage war again. That's the only moral outcome. I thought that too that it is important to remove the Nazism from the from the Nazis so you have normal people again basically. Right. So killing the individuals isn't always the way to get rid of an ideology. And my concern with trying to eradicate Hamas is the blowback. They're killing a lot of innocent people that will then grow up to become even worse terrorizers of the system than the current ones is my fear. And then that would leave Israel no ju no more justification other than to say we need to eradicate everyone there because other it will never otherwise it will never stop. And that's like the slippery slope I see in the future I do I want to avoid. Well, I, th I think he's underselling it because it's not only that they start this war, but they started the war and then refused to fight it. They attacked and then hit among the civilian population. And as far as the blowback, if this organization that is the leadership already says we're committed to wiping you off the face of the earth, like the idea that like, oh, well, just imagine what happens if you make them angry. They, they That's already their mission now. They're already at the end point. So, yeah, you do have a problem. But the fact is. Right now, they control the education system. Right now, they're breeding or right, trying to raise these kids into the next generation of soldiers to fight the Israelis. So, like, you have to get rid of that. And, like, you know, the Nazi example, we did do policies of, like, denazification. You had to take that stuff out of the education stuff. A lot of stuff that we would consider very, like, anti-American was done in Europe where they banned um, being in Nazi parties and denying the Holocaust and all of that because that's how extreme the the uh, that rooted ideology was in Europe. So it's a similar kind of thing. Like, But again, it's not that they just started the war. It's that they didn't fight it. They were like, okay, we attacked. Now we're going to hide and then wait for the media to say, look at how bad you are at finding right. us. And the other point I would make is that we've tried it your way. Israel's tried it your way for decades, and they got October 7th. So that way doesn't work because you cannot do business with savages. And that's what Hamas is. Not, I'm not talking about Gazans. I'm not talking about Arabs. Hamas is savages and they need to be exterminated because it's, if you don't exterminate them, it's going to happen again. So you're saying the, the two-party solution? Was that when you said the, the vision I'm looking for? Is that like a two-party solution? No, is that when you say- Like the um, two-state solution? Two-state solution. No, that's not what the two-state two state solution, solution, but the idea that, oh, we got to back off or, or do a ceasefire. Or, or worrying about, or what you said about worrying about it creating hate. That's the, Israel has tr done everything. They removed themselves from Gaza in 2005. They gave the Gazans incredible land that they could have turned into another Miami. That was part of the plan. That was part of like the Jared Kushner right. concept. And what did they do? So they tried to do what you're suggesting and what they got was October 7th. But they... If they were given the opportunity to build a great city, but then they were under a blockade, like walled in and under a, a blockade. They got billions of dollars. I mean, compared to them, they, they, the, the Gazans per capita get more money than Americans do, more money than any other, any other aid people in the world. But they were being blockaded? I don't know exactly what was being blockaded, but they were able to build, it, build an awful lot of stuff there. Including incredible tunnels. And why, I mean, if they, they can build a tunnel, why can't they build a resort? Hamas posted the video of turning water pipes into rockets. Yeah, they did. Right. Whether they actually right. were, were doing that or it was propaganda, that was their propaganda. Where I mean, they were like, look like at these water pipes they would gave do us. In that situation, you know, you have no money. You're being, if you feel like you're being annihilated, you just use your basic but weapons. You know, whatever. No one, with. no one was annihilated. No one's in there. No one's bothering them. If, 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 if Gaza and Hamas disarm tomorrow. There would be peace. If Israel disarmed tomorrow, Gaza would exterminate them within two weeks. What if everybody was armed? I'm seeing that the UN spent six hundred million on Gaza in twenty twenty. Well, how much six hundred million? Six hundred million in this just is, in twenty twenty alone and has given gave four point five billion between two thousand fourteen and twenty twenty. I've I've asked a lot of people about And that's just the UN the, uh, like what would happen and 
you know, usually when I ask like, what what would happen if, you know, like Hamas surrendered and they'd be like, the war's over. And I'd be like, and then what? Like, yeah, and, and Gaza goes on as it is. Right. And I'm like, with the walls and everything, like, yeah, of course. And then whatever, they can do whatever they want. And then I said, okay, what would happen if Israel said, we're tearing the walls down, Palestinians have free reign to move in, in and around Israel, you're now all welcome. And I've never gotten a straight answer because I think even the people who are who are critical of Israel or even, as I would call it, Israel deranged, understand what happens if Israel takes the walls down and says, all of Gaza, please feel free to, you get October 7th. Yeah, if, if well, you- there were a lot of, a lot of the, like, I remember the October 7th, there were a lot of the um, workers who had passes to work in Israel were among those who were committing the atrocities on that day. So they had, you know, already had access to Israel and they were coming in to do that. It's kind of crazy. I don't think that this, whatever, whatever this is, there's no easy answer. My position is typically the America first one of just like, oh, I don't know about the moral questions here, man. I don't know why we're involved. And I know, uh, I understand Ben Shapiro's argument about a U.S. ally in the region, the risks of, of rapid escalation if Israel uh, goes, what do they call it, the Samson option? And how the U.S. needs to have a strong presence in controlling things to prevent the expansion into a massive World War III. And I'm just like, I, I understand that my view more so is the U.S. is driving itself into World War III in a variety of different areas, particularly with Ukraine. I don't see how our involvement is improving anything. Your, your concern about Ukraine, I share completely. But the Hamas's charter is wipe out Israel and then wipe out all the Jews, including well, American they Jews. they did change it. They took that part oh, about wiping out the Jews just a few recently. Years, just recently, oh, really? yeah. just well, recently. I believe them. Well, I feel it's, better then. And this is this is the crazy thing. It's it's it's. Uh, I believe it's in the Hadith that it's what's what's that? The line says, "Oh, oh, uh, oh, you know, the tree says there's a Jew hiding behind me or something," and that was in the Hamas charter only until recently. So my point I is, feel I, better. I, I yeah, right, exactly. I don't believe it. <laughs> it was a PR move. It, right. it, it was a PR move, and I'm not accusing you of this, but it was a PR move. So that someone could make the argument you just made. Why are we there? Why are we helping them? They're, they're very good at PR. And people, heard, people have made that argument to me. They're like, no, that's not in the charter anymore. And I'm like, yeah, oh, come, come on. So what I've heard is that the pal- PLO, the Palestinian Liberation Organization, which was Yasser Arafat's right. gov- Palestinian government in the late 1900s or 1990s, you know, up to relatively recently, that I heard that the Israelis were involved with breaking them apart because they controlled the West Bank and Gaza, and it made it look like they're really going to get a two-state solution. We don't want that. We want the territory. So let's create a new government, we'll call it Hamas, that can rule over in Gaza while the PLO can have the West Bank. Now we have two disparate factions fighting each other, easy pickings, and they're villains so that when they attack us, we can use it as a false flag. It, you know, it's if someone stole my land, right? If someone came in and wiped out my family and stole my land, I would not sentence my descendants to generations of hate and despair and poverty. You move on. In fact, most places in the world have done that. That's exactly right. You move on. And but they what they have done, what what the uh, Hamas has done to the Gazans and what the what Arafat did was sentence these people, innocent people to generations of poverty and hate and vengeance, and he destroyed their lives, and Hamas is destroying their lives. And it doesn't matter what happened in the past, just move on. But what what about, I I figured it out. Right of return. Casinos in in the Gaza Strip. They can't gamble. What about- I know. What about right of- I'm kidding. My (laughs) my point is, I I talk about this because uh, uh, Native Americans, for instance, in, in the United States, they're never going to reconquer the United States. They've won lawsuits, that's what you do. They've set up casinos, they, they, it was masterful. I was reading about, I believe, a Hard Rock Seminole what, is what started the wave of Indian casinos. It was in the 70s. They had a bingo hall. The state said gambling is illegal. You can't do this. They said, you don't regulate us. We're federal under the, right. under, the under the treaties. Federal government said, you're damn right. We have jurisdiction here because the federal government's not going to give up jurisdiction if they can keep it. And they said, no, 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 no. They're, they're right. So they answered to us. And the Native Americans were like, we got a good deal for the federal government. Tax money. And then they were like, let's roll. And then Indian casinos popped up all over the place. And now you've got these extremely wealthy tribes that have found a way to succeed through the history that has been bad. And I have, I have no, if anyone who looks at the history of what happened to the American Indian in this country, it's indefensible. And I have nothing but sympathy and empathy for that. A lot more than I have well, for what's happening in Israel. And I agree with you 100%. Well, they the, have arisen above it. On the Native American thing, I think it's important to question... Uh, It's not, it wasn't a monolith. What happened to Native Americans wasn't, like, 
I, I wouldn't say European colonists arriving in the United in, into the the into the uh, into North America is 100 percent the cause of all strife and all calamity for all Native yeah, Americans. Okay, yeah. So I, I wouldn't I wouldn't necessarily say it's indefensible. I'm like, certainly there are many instances where, you know, uh, Native Americans went and killed a bunch of colonists for no reason and, and things like that. It had happened. It was inevitable and indefensible. That's the way but I there, would put it. It was I, a shame. I think there were things that were bad, like the Trail of Tears and things like Definitely. that are indefensible. And, 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 this is, and this is war. This is the history of humanity has been conquest, I think, through uh, moral philosophy, but mostly through abundance. Through technological advancement, we've come to the point where we're like, okay, you know, now we don't really need to be stealing land from each other because we're all pretty much too fat as it is. Not everyone in the world, but, you know, particularly in the United States and in the, in the developed world. We got so much, so much resources that these things are starting to chill out. Well, obesity is now a condition of poverty. That's crazy. Yeah. yeah. So, so look, uh, we see this in the animal kingdom. Animals, predators that are well fed, don't bother killing prey. It's it's a risk. So if you've got you know a lion that's gonna go fight a gazelle or something, there is a risk of death in doing that. But it needs to. It needs to survive. When you take these animals and put them in captivity and keep them well fed. There still is instinct, so it does happen, but there's, you'll see these videos where it's like a lion, like sitting and snuggling with a chicken or something because there's, there's no reason to fight. He's not hungry. So that's, that's, that's where we are going. And uh, I like these things. Now we're looking at other parts of the world that ideologically are driven towards fighting for, look, honor. I guess like it, 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 that is our land. Our family was there a hundred years ago. So we're going to just fight forever and it's a tough question because it, it i believe honor does matter i mean we're facing an invasion on our southern border you've got the black community in chicago screaming that they're being replaced did you, did you hear this yeah the, the, yeah. the, the black community is, has some kind of gr replacement theory that they believe is happening it's isn't that racist i'm, yeah. I'm told that's racist well Turns out it's just great not when they <laughs> say it. well that's yeah. what they've been replacement saying theory. and uh, obviously i'm being a little facetious but the black community in chicago has actually gone to meetings yelling you're replacing us because they're bringing these 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 people in, I think it's fair to be like, "Hey, we have morals, we have traditions, we have values. We don't want to lose, so we should control immigration." But there's a question of: Do you leave New York? Do you leave Chicago? Do you leave California? Find a better life. I think there is a good argument for find where you can where you can uh, thrive, make money, have a family, and then win financially, and let the people who have the bad ideas fail, and then over time you end up winning. But many people have said, "No, you can't give up these cities to the far left." So. There, there is an interesting conundrum in would you actually give up your land if someone came to take it from you versus I see your point. It's been what, 70 something years. Yeah, it's and, crazy. And at this point, maybe your best opportunity is build success and wealth. You, I mean, well, well, but if, no, my, if my dad ever... was like, you know, your grandma's house, my whole life since I was a kid, if he's like that, that the guy that lives there, he stole that from your grandma 35 years, 47 years ago. I'd be so pissed. I would be so pissed. And a dude was just living in my grandma's house and she had nothing. Like, I would be so mad. Why but, doesn't anyone ever get kill, mad at- Would you go try to kill that guy? If you ask me that now, I would say no. But if you stick me in Gaza for 20 years, I don't know. But what? why does no one ever get mad at Egypt? I mean, there's three right. crossings into Gaza. There's two from Israel and one from Egypt. Egypt supports this blockade fully. Yeah, Egypt- they, they are fully complicit and happy about it. And you have also other- other nations in the region, you have, you know, there's all these Palestinian refugees. Other nations in the region are refusing to take them in. So what's going on with that? Why is it that these people are, you know, why is it that this this group of people are so unpalatable to the rest of the people in the region? It's not just Israel who comes against these people. Do you know what it, I mean? It's the, it's the strategy. Like all of these nations have made a pact that they weren't going to take them as citizens because they want a perpetual refugee That's population right. there, That's a right. stateless group of people, because they want them to go into Israel. It's like, all politics. They could take these people. And I know like there have been problems when you import a mass of them that they don't think the government's uh, radical enough. This happened like where they try to assassinate the king of Jordan. But the fact of the matter is they were citizens of Jordan. Like there was no Palestine that Israel took over and they were citizens of Egypt, but like the plan and all the Arab states are basically aligned on this is to keep them there, have them be stateless people because eventually like it, in my opinion, it will work. Like I'm actually pretty doomer on like the future of Israel because public pressure is already turning against them. You can get attacked. It's the greatest terrorist attack in your history, proportionally one of the worst in the world compared to their population. 
and public opinion is like not on their side and they're well, only losing here, ground. Right? I, I public just, opinion where here or even here it's even like here? it's, it's yeah. low but like worldwide i mean now granted there's like 55 countries with built-in animosity to them for the jump but yeah they're losing public opinion on the world stage so this is the design this is the plan and i think back when the 67 war happened and they actually expanded into this territory, they should have sent the people there. Because what happened when to the Jewish populations in all these other countries? They were they were removed from their countries and they had to go to Israel. So, I, I, I repopulation think the is attacking. Thing, but you think they the, should have The important thing people that? need to understand about war is that you're not making any moral arguments. It's never going to happen. There is no circumstance where you say, hey, Israel, what you did was wrong and unjust. Well, I think re their, their response is going to be, we're at war. Have a nice day. I think repopulation violates the Geneva Convention. Oh, it, it, it does. But it's 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 one of those things that now it's like it sounds super horrible. But Germany is a state for Germanic people. Italy is a state for Italian people like different ethnic groups have separated to form their own states throughout all of human history. I mean, Austria, Hungary, two separate ethnic groups. They split off into two different countries like you need to you, like if you can't get along with the, with two groups can't get along. Like one of the, what, are you, what your option are you, is to is to form your own countries. This are, is what the Kurds have been trying to do you forever. Are you suggesting we should have a national divorce in America? I I don't think so necessarily in America. But <laughs> well, one of the things I think about right of return because we're talking about like repopulation going is like you were saying earlier, John. I kind of agree with you, got both you and Tim, that just because my my parents owned a house, I'm born. I don't have a right to that house. So what is this right of return? For? So so let me let me. Well, let, I think it's I by de facto I, mean, I don't own it when I'm okay, born. So the guy that owns it owns it. So let's so that's let's 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 play a game. Uh, your grandpa goes to you and he says, son, 75 years ago, your great grandfather lived in that house. And that guy who's in there, his great grandfather came in with a gun, pointed at us and kicked us out. And now we don't have it anymore. You need to get it back. So then you get your buddies together and you go to the house and you bang on the door and you're like, give me back my house. And the guy goes, who are you? And you're like, my great grandfather owned this house, but your great grandfather stole it from him. And then he goes, what? Your great grandfather wasn't even here. There was no one in this house. I came here. Your grandfather was across the street. And you're gonna be like, that's not what my great grandfather said. And I'm sitting here as like an adjudicator being like, yo, what? Yeah, I don't I don't like that. It belonged to my ancestors, so now it belongs to me. I don't no, like that. No, no, no. I, that's I, not what I'm saying. You don't know. You've got the pro-Israel side saying that's not true, and the pro-Palestine saying, pro-Palestine says it's our land, we can prove it. Pro-Israel side says, no, it's not, we can prove it. I and guess. then the United States is stupid, in my opinion, for being involved in in a dispute that has has no like you're not you can't solve i don't i think that trying to build israel there because that's the place that they were 2000 years ago is like the palestinians saying i want my house back it's the same my point is you are you are operating under the assertion it actually was their land which is disputed by the opposing faction oh, okay I, think, I am not israel or palestine i am the united states and i say i don't see why we're involved in their dispute over and this. i would i would just take your metaphor even further Look at what you were talking about, the strategy. If you care about the people in that area, they're the ones that are suffering because of that bullshit and because of the strategy that he's talking about. It is the, the, the Gazans, the civilians, they are the ones generationally being abused by Egypt and, and, and the Palestinians and, and the Hamas. They're the ones doing the suffering. Israel's doing pretty good. You know, they built a little paradise over there. I know October 7th happened. But the true victim of all this are the are the people that are being kept in poverty and are being taught to hate and vengeance and are being told, you need to go get your grandfather's house. That's your identity. I, I, go I, get your grandfather's and house. Now, and now here's another thing, too. Ben and Jerry's came out and they were like, we should, you know, the U.S. is on stolen land. We should give it back. And then some Native Americans were like, your factory is on stolen you, land. We should give it back. And they were like, wait, no, we don't want to do that. Not for us. But, but think about the United States. There are Na Native Americans who are worth hundreds of millions of dollars or millions of dollars, wild, wildly successful. Uh, there, th th There is this, like, after a long period of time, I don't think the answer is for wealthy and successful Native Americans who have made a, a good life to, to be like, okay, now I'm going to go physically fight to take the they Ben and Jerry's factory. They were bought, a lot of those chiefs were bought out in the process of the of the colonization. My, my, my point so is, they were very wealthy. A lot of them, they weren't like the slaves. They were my, very- My point is you're better off living on barren land than fighting in a war. Yeah, just go, go do your own thing. Just let it go and do your own thing. That's the key to a good life. And the other thing about this whole- colonized land that that indian tribe that said that they owned the ben and jerry's land maybe they did 
But you go back in time, they stole it from someone, yeah. and then they stole it from someone. So who do you give it to? Do you look for someone who's 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 part of a caveman? Well, there, have you ever the seen the uh, conquest and energy? You have know? you ever seen the, the there's a viral video? It's called like this this land is my land. God gave this land to me. Mm -mm. It went viral like 14 years ago, and it's bas it's a song where they're singing this land is my land, and and it basically just shows an animation of every different group <laughs> right. that has yeah. taken. So who do you give it to? The, the, what, what are they what do they call the region? What's the proper term? The Levant. The Levant is it? Oh, like yeah. they showed all the different factions that had taken it and right. lost it and taken yeah. it and lost it. And you go so far back. I don't even know if the, does the video go back all the way to the Canaanites before the the Israelite <laughs> it even existed, like the Canaanites. It's but this is the this is the problem with it is my the, the, my ancestral land argument. It's funny because what they're doing right now is they're saying Vladimir Putin is evil. He's just like Hitler. He's not going to stop at Ukraine. He thinks Ukraine is his. And then you go, well, 70 years ago, Ukraine yeah, was. was Soviet Union. <laughs> and then you ask the same exact people. Now, what about the Palestinians who want to take back they, what they claim is theirs in Israel? Because that used to be their land. Well, but they're, they're the oppressed. It's okay if the oppressed right. want to want to attack someone else to take land they think is theirs. But if you're an oppressor, you can't take attack land. And, take, that, uh, and that dumb argument, the oppressor oppressed, has removed yeah. all logic, all facts, all history, and all morality from the argument. This is this is the funny there, thing. There's but, a justification but, but Ian, of war so, that so you can use. So let me ask you a question. Uh, you you you, you uh, do you agree with or or uh, sympathize? Let's let's assume the land uh, in Israel that Palestinians claim is theirs is there just for the sake of argument. Do you sympathize with them and believe they have a right to take it back? I don't think they have a oh god I'm not, i've never been there i don't know what the conditions are really like but like you said oppressed people that are overthrowing tyranny can maybe make a claim for a just war people that have all the control that are stomping out powerless civilians do not have a justification for that in my opinion so you you you, you would go with the critical theory on because israel is stronger well, they don't have a right to defend themselves or what no no they do have a right to defend themselves always 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 but is the is the war declaration justified of them taking their houses back um i don't know man i i I don't think so. I don't the the what is it the the UN said that there Israel's in violation of like international law with the occupation. So but I don't know but if that, that really gives them right to that's attack as and it kill. pertains to Gaza or the West Bank. I, I'll answer it. I think there was a period of time where the land's in dispute. People fight over land historically and they should fight. But what I what I'm annoyed by is like if you lose the war, you lost the war. Yeah. Like, you know, it's sad what happened to the natives. I will say there are wealthy natives, but they are poorer on average than most groups in the United States. So they still are suffering. We should have assimilated them into the population like some of the founders wanted to. Unfortunately, others won out on that. But for the for the Palestinian cause, yeah, they fought the wars multiple times. They did not win. So, like, there's this weird thing where it's like. In, in this specific conflict, and this is why I'm, I hate the ceasefire talk, because if ceasefires worked, this would be the most peaceful place on planet Earth. The problem that we have here is that throughout most of human history, when you started a war, you knew that if you lost, you were going to be annihilated. So you were very cautious about starting wars. What we do when we're like when when we constantly police this action or that action or try to get them to use the least amount of force possible is we just sow the seeds for the second conflict and we lower the barrier or the, we lower the consequences for initiating force against another country. Like in Japan, like we were like, OK, you're going to bomb Pearl Harbor, but you're going to feel <laughs> the full force of the United States of America. You're never going to do this again. Yeah. In, no, Ger that's in of, Germany. That's sort of a and we occupied them for, since then. Yeah. And Germany, they declared war on us. They didn't actually attack us in Pearl Harbor for no reason. They decided they were going to declare war on us. Well, and no, it's like, OK, no, well, here's, here's a, here's you're going to feel the here's, here's full force. blew up here's, 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 I got a Actually, question. we declared I, I, war in so Germany when their submarines right. sunk one I of our ships. I got a question ships. for you guys. Uh, what, what started World War II? Uh, Hitler's invasion of Poland, I believe. Why did Hitler invade Poland? To get land back that used to be Germany. Leave it According to him. Was it, was it, was it Danzig? I think it is. Yeah, you, you brought that up anyway a yeah. couple weeks Tucker ago. Tucker Carlson brought that up. Okay, so We Danzig. only commented on what he was talking about. It was about. more than just Danzig, I think, but that was and a big city. And I, I, what happened was, uh, after World War I, uh, Germany, and what, what was the what was The, the Treaty of Versailles. The Treaty of Versailles. Versailles, Versailles right. Paris. Which and Versailles impoverished France. Germany. Right, took a bunch of their oh, land, right. stripped it away, gave, took, a, gave authority. Made the debts of all the other yeah, countries. Yeah. Right, and Dumb. so they Dumb. were... So, so you have this country with hyperinflation. The Weimar Republic Printed is struggling. Money, yeah. And what happens? Hitler, who was deranged, uh, utilized the, the 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 anger these people felt, uh, weaponized it in stupid ways, obviously, and psychotic and deadly ways, 
but it was very much, oh, hey, I get to start a war because that land's historically ours and we have a right to it. And that was his, he said that city was historically Germany. Give it back. Poland said, no. He said, okay, declared war. Yeah, it was more too. I've heard that there were, they were the people in Danzig that were considered the social Germans were being genocided by the new Polish government. They wanted the city for Poland. And uh, Hitler was like, oh yeah. God, those are German And citizens. by the way, there there is a lot of truth to Eastern European cities being set up by the Germans. Like that, that actually is like historically accurate, but that doesn't necessarily mean you could invade that territory. Right, but I, I'm going to nerd out and say Japan started World War II because they were invading countries in Asia before that. Right. Absolutely. They were super aggro. But, but I mean, like, <laughs> it, you know, like what, what, what triggered I say Mussolini Germany started World War I. And, Mussolini's invasion of yeah. East Africa gave Hitler the, the <laughs> Cassus Belli. Yo, it's wild. Like, World War II was, like, legit all over the place. It was in, in Africa. Is everywhere. It was yeah. like a world war. Yes, right. Yeah, it was, <laughs> now that you mention it. But, but, but Antarctica this, 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 this is my thing. Like, they say Putin wants to take back Ukraine, and bec it's because Ukraine was historically Russia, so he thinks he has a right to it. And I'm like, but so is the Palestinians the, don't have a right to Israel? Right. Israeli got, state, are they no not saying they have a right to the territory? And who? The Israeli state, I believe the claim of the, what well, you want to call it occupation or whatever you want to call it, is that they have a right to the territory. It's the same thing Putin's saying about Ukraine that the well, Germans the other said question, about though, Poland. Is like, the other question is, where are the Jews supposed to go? Like, where are they supposed to go in the world? I live with I them amongst even, us. I, I, think, sure. I don't even know but who's like, Jewish. But, 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 but I don't even want to. I don't even want to say Jewish because there's other people who live in sure. Israel. Where are the Israelis supposed to go right. if if the if the Palestinians have their way and to the river to the sea to the sea and from the river to the sea becomes you know from the Jordan River all the way to the you know right they want them to go to the sea yes they want so where are they supposed to where right. are they supposed to go you mean if I make such a I'm just groundbreaking saying, argument that they actually declare peace. Like, where are they going to go? Well, I don't think. Yeah. I mean, do you think I, I don't think that Hamas has any intention of having a peaceful situation with Israel? Like at this point, the Palestinians would need to have a completely new leadership structure. And you have the Palestinian Authority making deals with, you know, having like backroom conversations or whatever with Hamas Um because together, like if they unified, then there's an even bigger problem for Israel. But Israel removed all of the settlements, all of the Israeli settlements from Gaza in like 2005. And we're like, OK, have your have your spot, you know, and we're going to go over here. We're going to maintain really secure borders because I know that you have a lot of terrorists. Um, but it was only after Biden got elected that uh, according to like the Wall Street Journal reporting. It was after Biden got elected that Hamas started making these plans to do this invasion. And it's pretty interesting, I think, that timing, because Donald Trump doesn't have, you know, Donald Trump is like the the crazy homeless guy on the corner with a knife. You're going to back away. Right. Like one thing I really liked about Donald Trump is like he was pretty clear. If you come after the U.S., if you come after our allies, we're just going to destroy you is what's going to happen. Like we're going to have a disproportionate response. And as an American, if my country is under threat. I want a president who's going to be no holds barred about a response. I don't want a proportionate response if you attack Plus, America. I don't want that to be proportionate. Like, I'm not, I don't want to, you know, mess around with you so that maybe you like keep chucking bombs at us or whatever. You know what Plus I mean? Plus, that's the best way to keep peace. And it's if a good way to peace, keep peace. Well, you know what? Scare it, the hell out of the other Talk guy. quietly, carry a big stick. Yeah. What was, what was that Trump quote? He's like on the voicemail and he's like, <laughs> yeah, I told Xi and Putin that if they, if he took Taiwan or he took Ukraine, I'd nuke Moscow or Beijing. <laughs> I love this. And, he, and he's like, I don't know if they believed me, but maybe 5%. Exactly. <laughs> like, just believe him a little bit. I'll and then suddenly Beijing. we're going to have some peace. We <laughs> had the, peace in Israel. And one thing that, Hamas definitely doesn't want and the hardline Islamists don't want. They don't want Saudi Arabia and the UAE having any kind of normalized relations with Israel. And I think a lot of this is about messing up that kind of diplomacy. Look, take everything Democrats have said about Trump completely at face value and true and now be a foreign leader. And he comes up to you and he's like, right. uh, well, if you take uh, Ukraine, I'll, I'll nuke Moscow. And you're like, <laughs> that's great. Is, is this guy for real? Could, what what do happen. I do? <laughs> <laughs> have I, you seen the reports about this guy? He's yeah. nuts. That's but, that's a thing that I like about Trump. He the, keeps peace by, you know, and he kept peace in the United States by just like <laughs> appearing like he could do anything. You never knew. And that, I like that. I kinda, like that in a president. That, Biden, it's like, oh, you know, if you blow up New York, Biden's going to be like, oh, I'm sorry. Did we do something to yeah, offend let's, you? Let's be proportional. Yeah. <laughs> do you need more gay stuff? But, but the answer, <laughs> but the answer to your question. Where would the Jews go? That was the whole point of creating Israel. Right, Because they had no place to go after of the Holocaust. Course. They had been d destroyed and 
it wasn't just what the Nazis did to them. It's what all of Europe did to them. It's what it's what Russia did to them with the pogroms. So they went back to their homeland, which they feel they have a claim on going back to the Book of Moses 4,000 years ago. Well, and it's kind of convenient, too, to put Israel there right in harm's way. It's convenient for Europe and for the United States, you know? Because then Israel takes all the slings and arrows, and we're just over here like. Oh, well, I, 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 we'll I, give you, we'll I, I certainly check. think there's a very large religious component to it as well. Oh yeah, definitely. With the, uh, you know, the red heifer stuff and the eschatology or whatever, those are fascinating conversations. But there absolutely are people who believe it. I'm not saying the government believes it. The conversations I've had with the the very anti-Israel uh, faction, these people say. They don't think Israel really believes the deep religious stuff and the second coming or anything like that. But there are powerful political forces within Israel and outside of Israel that are Christian or Jewish that certainly believe that they've got to, you know, take the heifer, sacrifice it and all that stuff or whatever that is. I don't know. Yeah, realistically, I would say that Jewish people could live wherever they want on Earth, wherever is safe and enjoyable, like United States. They, I live, my Miami. best friends Miami have been Jewish been? throughout life and I didn't even know, I don't know what that means. I don't, it's no different than Christian in my mind, it, but they weren't hardcore practicing. And I understand why they would want a community of people that shut everything down on Saturday and everyone's cool with it. I kind of like miss when stuff got shut down on Sundays. When I grew up in Massachusetts, stuff would be closed on Sundays. What and religion? you kind of like had to take a break. Uh, Christianity, you know, you close the Sundays, the Sabbath day. Chick-fil-A. Everybody yeah. was Chick-fil-A. Yeah, everybody was Chick-fil-A. But like you'd go into stores and you couldn't buy. In, blue, in Massachusetts, they had blue laws. I don't know if they still do. But like you couldn't buy liquor on Sunday. They have that where I live. They, you still can't. I, I think not till noon or something. In you Pennsylvania, can. I think the state yeah. stores are oh, you can't. Yeah. You can't buy cars in, uh, I'm pretty sure, in Virginia on, on Sunday. Oh my gosh! Yeah. Well, but it was, it to your new point, demonic technology when Amish. they wrote that law in 1911 or whatever. <laughs> but, but to your point, no, like you a, can't you can't have the stores open on Sunday. And I don't know when they made the law. I'm just saying. But what to your point, Ian, about like uh, they could live in the United States. Yeah, that's the second most like Jewish populated country in the world, the United States. But like the idea is minority populations historically or distinct ethnic groups find their own state. And like for the for the Jewish people, it makes sense. Like all their things are there. Yeah. Like, you know, all the things in their book that, that that's like down the street. Now, if they formed a nation, like let's say they lost the war and they had to be pushed off and they had to form a nation on like an island somewhere and they went with that, I'd be like, fine, like, you know, you lost. I'm sorry that all your like religious texts, like items and places are all in that location, but they ended up winning the war. So, so. so you, do you think it's okay for an ethnic group to find and create their own state? I, I think it's the history of the world. People form uh, form their states based on ethnic origin or shared religion or something shared. Like Taiwan, like like, they like, were like anywhere, the, like France, but like the idea of a Jewish, that's an ideology, yeah. actually. Yeah, yeah. exactly. Like of that's an ethno saying. state, like the purpose of their government is to protect their. I people think in the Florida. United, I think to to the United States becoming an ethno state, I think that's a pipe dream I'm that not people don't. About the I, I know. I'm just I'm just clarifying. But talking about Israel, most countries in the history of the world are ethnic are ethno states. Like it's just a fact. Or religion or shared religion right so so you would say yes yes 100 like percent. but, but what, the, so, so the question is about europe yeah i think right. germany look germany in, should be for germany when, when otto von bismarck united germany into one state in like the 1800s like the reason they did that is because germanic people needed all, their own state they had cities in eastern europe that they had put together and the native population didn't like the german elite in those cities when the when I, and it's also in the 1800s the first time like italian unification happened it was about having a state for italian people like this is the history of the world so 100 percent of my favorite france for the french yeah and italy for the italian yes the thing about England israel though English. israel i agree a lot of ways like that is how societies form culturally over time you develop an ethnic state and then you make a state out of it or whatever but the the jewish state got built by a law it wasn't like naturally over time for thousands of years they got placed there in 1917 or some ridiculous like they just all of a sudden it just appeared and all this new ethnicity appeared there and they were like this is our land and anyone else that's not this ethnicity might have a problem with that and that's like so forcing yeah. an ethnic state is might it's, be a well, different argument a lot of a lot of ethnic states were created in the immediate aftermath of world war ii like pakistan was created was actually cut off from india and then there was actually east and west pakistan which one became bangladesh but yeah it was created suddenly and like the lead up was and there was a jewish president presence but if you look at the ottoman records they kept it very low like five thousand jewish people in that territory but over time, after the Ottoman Empire fell, they started buying up land, establishing a presence. 
the British ended up receiving that territory after World War One when the Ottoman Empire fell, prize of war. And they promised, they actually promised two states for one for the for the soon to be called Palestinian population, one for the uh, the soon to be called Israeli population. And, you know, that they didn't really deliver on that. I believe there was an assassination of a British official, I forgot, and by an uh, by a Jewish like terrorist that assassinated him. And the Brits were like, all right, we're out of here. You figure it out. And they kind of they or they turned it over to the UN. They have a war that is that what is now Israel won. And like that's it is what it is. That's one way to put it. It is what it is. But I mean, are you are you satisfied with what it is? Sometimes I'm not satisfied and there's better ways that it can be. I mean, I could be satisfied, but like I could be satisfied or not satisfied, but it doesn't matter. Like states form on ethnic or religious grounds like the Jewish people, both ethnically and religiously have formed in this location as their state. The challenges to their statehood being wars were lost. So like it exists like so once you've already been established, like that's it, you're a country. Yeah, and I should actually point out in case people are wondering, I've never asked to dissolute Israel in any yeah. form. I, I love Jew, Jewish everything about God is like what I'm into right now. Like a true Jew. I mean, that is like the, the essence of our Abrahamic faith. That's where it comes from. Is but I, I would say the same thing if it was the Kurds, like, you know, a historic group that has been stateless, that has experienced like oppression, uh, the Armenians, you know, they, I believe they form reformed their state in the nineties, right? Like I, I believe it was that recent, you know, they faced oppression for the Turks and I believe they were, um, they might've been under the Soviet union, but I could be wrong about that. Like, yeah, and a bunch of states formed after the Soviet Union fell, like, you know, brand new states, but Ukraine being one of them. Yeah. So, like, I, I would be like, it's it's just how the world tends to work, like, historically. And I think if they reshaped Iraq and Syria into a Sunni, Shia and Kurdish, like three separate states, that would also be a solid plan. Who is they? Uh, well, I'm just saying if that's how <laughs> no, they no, no. separate it off. Who is they, though? Yeah. Who is they, though? <laughs> We all know. No, you, but like if you, those yeah. groups can't live together and they separate, like that's what happens. Like we live in a very American context where we're like, Ital like I live in New York City, Italian neighborhood, uh, you know, uh, or or German signs like in Astoria, Queens, like you see Steinway, it's a German sign. It's the literally the most diverse place on, on, on planet Earth. When they did the human genome study, they did it right there because you have 170 plus languages. That's beautiful. That's something that can work in the United States of America. They can't work with two different religions in Israel and Gaza well, you're saying over there. So you, you think mass diversity, multiculturalism like that in New York, you said? Yeah, I said in a story, like you have all these people living together perfectly fine. Like, you know, there's some problems, but it's relatively fine by comparison. The story is pretty cool. Yeah, it's where I had my first gyro. Yeah, and I think. Yeah. Yeah, in an American <laughs> really context, and you probably had it on a German name street because it used to be a German I, I live near Steinway. Yeah. yeah. I live on 31st. So like that can work and we all expect that to work. And we think that our context in America can be applied over the history of the world. But let's not be dishonest about it. We had conflict with the natives, conflict with black Americans, conflict amongst different European ethnic groups. And over time, we were able to work that out. These people are in their conflict phase and it's greater than what we experienced. They're like constantly at war. We never had like an actual race war in the United States of America. We had a civil we war. We had a civil war instead. Do you think Israel's going to have a civil war? Inside Israel? No. But like with these, if they were to merge the countries, like, you know, absorb the population, these one staters who just want the Arabs to have the majority so that they can vote to kill the Jews. Right. Like, if they were to <laughs> do that, that be. would lead to a civil war, <laughs> yeah. which is what happened to start Israel. Like that territory, that was what that was. They just weren't a nation yet. With our with our comeuppance as our this a nation that's given us the groundwork and stability to host 180 different cultures or whatever you were talking about in one city, like we fought a civil war and... Mm -hmm. It ended up with putting a ton of power in the central authority and the federal government after that. Like Abraham Lincoln just seized control and made it basically that was the end of the republic. If you want to ask some of the greatest minds, of, or at least there's one guy who said that. Uh, I kind of agree. The, the Civil War is like, we can't do this republic anymore. It's not working. We need a central authority. It's too big to have a republic is what the, they, they thought. And it's yet to be disproven because we're still together. Um, but think, it, do know, countries need that in order to support this forced integration? One of the things that I, I take a lot from Israel is Israel established itself as a nation. It hadn't been a nation previously, right? It also, um, I forget the guy's name, but the, the guy who basically said, you know, Hebrew has not been a spoken language. We're going to turn it into a spoken language. And he said, we're gonna, only going to speak Hebrew to our kids. And he resurrected Hebrew, right? And that's that's a really, that's a pretty fascinating thing. He said, this is our culture and we're going to make a place that our culture is. And I look at America and we have, you know, growing up, 
We all grew up in this country. We had a really rich culture. You could kind of understand it, right? You knew like what the cultural norms were. There was a lot of, there was baseball. There was apple pie cooling on the windowsill. These were, whether these were our homes or not, these were some of the things that we looked to. We had this idea of what it would be when we grew up in this country. We would be able to own a home. You know, if we wanted to do that, we would be able to go west and pursue our dreams. We'd be able to have families. You know, we expected that the uh, cultural infrastructure would exist to teach our children about our history, uh, our our language, our shared beliefs, our shared understanding, our um, the social religion of kindness and generosity that basically exists regardless of what your religion is at home. And then we have had the past like, what, 30, 40 years of directly undermining that and cutting off our own culture at the knees and saying everything that America was built on is wrong. So everything that exists in America is wrong and needs to be dismantled. And I look at a cult country like Israel or like you're talking about ethno states. And I think America doesn't have that. And that's a good thing. But why is it that we are destroying our culture and saying it's terrible and replacing it with something that, you know, has a morality like shifting sand where we can't stand on it? We can't send our children to any schools and expect that they will even be educated in our own history. Our institutions are no longer stewards of our culture. They're no longer stewards of our history. Like, why is it that we have so much to say about every other nation on earth and what they're doing, you know, and how they're treating the their conflicts or whatever, when we have absolutely no interest in preserving or stewarding our country and keeping it, you know, keeping it whole. We just let, we just let it, totally crumble we just let it be attacked constantly i'm i'm well, we so have, sick of we that we used to have so much buy-in in america that people would not teach their children their like native language Correct. from where they came from right. Not, right. not because they wanted them to be this uneducated is my great -grandparents. but because they wanted them to speak english they wanted them to integrate into the country you couldn't say a bad thing about about america to any of my yeah. great grandparents and they were italian they were norwegian and they were you know and then there were the yankees and, and, they and were i the think same. i think a second language is super valuable i wish i would have learned spanish from my mother but like that used to be the norm in america of german immigrants and throughout all of his italian immigrants and it's like it wasn't like you were losing it because you're being americanized which is considered so negative it was you were choosing to make sure your children were american like we that is a special you thing wanted it you that, wanted yeah, american you that's wanted a your special buy-in that we had in this country and like i you know i love america and i want other places to be more like it but i have to like deal with the practical reality that that's not the case i mean scotland and and uh and what you got scotland and uh england they're on the same island britain They've fought for over petty differences forever. And they're still like, even though they're in one United Kingdom, they're still distinct peoples from one another. And they're as close as you can get to being the same. So like this is this is just what people tend to do. And like, you know, we try to move past it here, but it's not something that everywhere in the world is ready for, especially not in the Middle East, especially not in Israel and Gaza. And uh, what's the other one? The West Bank. I think that. One of the great things about America, though, because what you're saying is right, but we have 50 states and you can find what you're looking for if you move. You can't necessarily, it turns out. You can go to Wyoming. <laughs> you, you can, can always go to Wyoming. You can always go to Texas. <laughs> I just and, left New York last year and I moved out here and, and that, I love it out here, but I have not found what I grew up with. But I find if you, if, you know, in the cities, things are bad because Democrats run the cities and there's division and they're removing merit. Um, they're ginning up the race issues, which we didn't have. You know, when I grew up, it, you know, Oprah, Bill Cosby, Eddie Murphy, Richard Pryor, Prince, Michael Jackson, they were the biggest stars in the world. I mean, and now we've, we've become very divided, but the secret to America is that you just have to go where things are normal where there's sanity. And that's the great thing about the country is that it's so huge. It's so big. And I think another good thing that's happening is the the way that we're atomizing the culture. Now that like this, what we're doing right here, this wasn't here 20 years ago. It was ABC, CBS, and NBC. And now people can find their own culture and be a part of that like they did for, for 10,000, 100,000 years of human history until mass culture came along. So the great thing about America, you have the states, and it's so big and so vast that you can't hide from it. And I've always said, the Amish figured it out. The right. Amish knew what they were doing. 
They moved to the most rural parts of America. And they unplugged from the mainframe and they held on to their culture. They also moved to like one of the only places in the United States where you can actually grow cocaine. You can like grow coca where? leaves there in Lancaster. That explains the work ethic. Right? right? Yeah. Lancaster? What Lancaster. state's that in? It's in Pennsylvania. <laughs> <laughs> Just asking for a friend. <laughs> yeah. No, you, yeah, I, yeah. I, I grew up by Amish. Lancaster? 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 I don't know. I'm not from there. Yeah. Maybe yeah, that's pretty the British Lancaster. pronouncing. Lancaster instead of what Lancaster? It sounds like how John Lennon yeah. would say yeah. it. Lancaster. I'm going to go with Lancaster. It sounds more American. I grew up near the Amish. We used to make I fun of those. I can say Worcester. I can people say growing, that okay. Those guys. I knew some Amish people growing up, and I would kind of just thought like, oh, I feel so sad for them. They're they, never going to get to play video games like they me. But they have Rumspringa. Out, they can do anything they want in Rumspr- Rumspringa. What's Rumspringa? It's like your gap year from being Amish. You get to oh. go live in the world in the real, yeah. they in, in, and check it, it, it out. Lancaster. Uh-huh. Lancaster. Not did, Lancaster. Did you, guys, yeah. did you guys know the Amish are really bad at solving uh-huh. murders? No. Their forensics are centuries behind. <laughs> <laughs> no, they got to figure it out. You know, and that's what we can, that's what everybody can do. That's the great thing about this country is that you can, you can unplug, you can remove yourself and you can have your own culture. You're not always going to be able to do that. Eventually the Democrats are going to win the Supreme Court and it's all going to be over. That's, that's the beginning of the end that and that's inevitable. you think they're going to pack the court? You think I don't think they're going to have to. I think they're going to win enough elections. And then as soon as the Supreme Court is left wing, America is over. We're going to lose. All they need is five justices, mm-hmm. and it's going to be over. So, but I don't know. Hopefully, that won't happen in my lifetime. I'm glad I'm 58. Yeah, but don't, 28. don't plant seeds of trees you don't want to see. <laughs> That's a good point, too. I, I'm concerned with that, too, man. I don't like putting that immense amount of power in the hands of 13 people. That's ridiculous. Or how nine. many? Nine. 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 Or, yeah. nine. or nine. Nine dudes get to choose the fate of the- s- They're not um, all dudes. Yeah. Well, everybody's a dude in my mind, but you know, I know what you mean. But yeah, all these people, <laughs> they're all cool dudes. What's up, homies? Um, Nine people? No, man. We need at least sh- but they're term just limits. There, they're there to answer. They're there to like answer the unsolvable questions, right? Like that's what their job is. Hey, Congress passed this law or my state passed this law or this is a thing that happened. Is it in line with the Constitution? And their job is to say yes or no. It's it, not in line with the Constitution. It tur- and it, it turns out their job is to decide whether or not to answer the questions that people Well, the they, don't they don't have to have answer to. all the questions. You can't answer all the questions. Some of them, they let the lower court's rulings stand and they say, no, we're not going to go with that. But what you talked about is what's happening to the Supreme Court. Right. All the standards, all the basic things that we agreed on, like what you talked about, they're they're going away. So you get a what's your name, Contenji Jackson Brown, Contenji Brown Jackson. Yeah, Contenji. She's who completely looks at rights, not from a not from a human rights point of view, but from a racial point of view. Yeah, she looks at it in the oppression hierarchy. Exactly. So that's that's when the Supreme Court breaks down. You get five of her, we're done because she's going to rationalize. Every left wing thing, take away the guns. Once we lose the guns, it's over. So, but in the meantime, think about the Amish. They got it all figured out. And we will lose on the Supreme Court because, you know, Republicans are 50 50 at best at appointing justices. And like, you know, a, a constitutional or textualist philosophy, they'll say, oh, political, they'll use political, do- uh, political questions doctrine to refuse to deal with something like that. But as soon as they have a majority, they're going to press on on all these issues like, you know, Roe versus Wade, like they invented a right to privacy and added abortion into the right of privacy. Like, that's how we yeah, got they that made precedent. It up. Yeah. And like that, there's a bunch of different precedents where they're like, oh, well, you know, you have to adjust it. Like, you know, Ruth Bader Ginsburg would say the Constitution is a living document. It's like if you have a living Constitution, it might as well be dead. Like we have an amendment process in order to make changes. And now we've gotten to a time where we're talking about the country resting on which nine people are on the Supreme Court. This was supposed to be the weakest branch of government. And like it's the it's now like arguably the strongest behind the presidency, which is a complete inversion of how it's supposed to be. Like it was supposed to be Congress, president, court. And then like we kind of flip that, although the president's powerful in other regards, more powerful. It's well, like Congress is just dysfunctional. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. I was gonna say they're the most uh, powerful civil aspect of our government, the courts. But then I was like, well, Congress is civil, but they're not really. But I didn't want to make that joke because I like those people. Some of them. <laughs> some um, of them. I mean, they're are they considered civilians? People that serve in Congress. I I would think so. Yeah, that's our civilian. Too. But the executive branch is not. We call civilian. it a civilian government. Except the te- yeah yeah because the the commander is supposed to be a civilian in that role right. of the commander of the military for the time. Well, well, so you're shall talking we, about- Shall we move on then and, and, and talk about prophecy and the end of the world? I would love to. All right. So there's an earthquake in New York now that we're rapidly <laughs> shifting off. That was the longest segment we've ever done. Epicenter of the New York City, New Jersey earthquake was near Trump National Golf Club. Ground shook very hard. What a great quote. 
I don't think near <laughs> is fair. I think at is a better way to put it. So you have, uh, here's the image of the epicenter of the earthquake. Notice the highways here. Notice everything. You can pull up Trump's golf club. It's literally right there. It's there. The Trump golf club is the epicenter, thus proving Trump is either going to save humanity or condemn it. What say you, panel? Do we have any reports of damage from Bedminster? I don't think there's any damage. <laughs> I, think I, a, I think a garbage can tipped over. Right. I yeah. think that- They just, will rebuild. Just like Ruth Bader Ginsburg <laughs> wants you to think the Constitution is alive, I think the earth is alive. I think it is. I think there, at, least, at the very least, it's a lot of living organisms making up one big organism, kind of like our bodies with all these living cells making up one living organism. And I think this is not a coincidence. You so think you're it's saying a conscious rock? The earth or is at Or at least sentient. Trump? Or, or Maybe, something about Earth has Trump. been watching MSNBC too much. Yeah, it was in Taiwan, and now it's at Bedminster. I mean, it could just be total coincidence. I just, it, the magnetic nature of the universe and earthquakes, ma lightning in the way that magma is magnetic and flows, and like, it's all kind of connected. I think, I, I think Letitia James just filed a motion saying he overvalued this property, didn't write that it was on a fault line, so. <laughs> is like, that, is it true, though? No, I'm just oh, that. Because that, that's actually, some people were saying that Letitia uh, James is threatening to bring up charges against Trump for the earthquake, <laughs> but that he didn't, he overvalued it. Never, never that had, actually makes sense. He said, never had an earthquake, 0% chance in a filing 20 years ago, and she's got him now. What? So, but yeah. Is, I, it's the Ramapo fault that this goes is, under New Jersey. We live in a simulation. And the Mandela effect is because they can't erase all of our memories when the simulation changes. I'm kidding, by the way, but like, <laughs> it's it's just, there's so many weird things that go on. It's insane. It's yeah, it was an earthquake. Everyone's like, wow, did you hear this? This morning we were doing the show and like people are texting like, it was an earthquake. And then they're like, oh, and by the way, it was like at Trump, Trump's golf club. Are and you before this? Oh, were you going to say? I was going to say, put that in a book. No one would believe it. Right. Yeah. <laughs> you hear in a movie. No one would believe it. Stories when, in the when Bible. They, when they write the history and they'll be like, Shortly before Trump arrived at court for, uh, you know, for this proceeding, <laughs> there was an earthquake at his golf resort, which shocked the nation or whatever. And people are going to be like, no, wait, come it, on. Kind of, yeah, yeah, right. Go on. They're embellishing uh, Announcing everything. the arrival of the host. Um, at, in the Bible, they'll talk about like great natural disasters wiping out unjust people. I think it was Sodom and Gomorrah. They say that it, it, I don't know what it was that destroyed the city in explosion. I think it was built on a salt mine, one of those cities. So the fumes from sulfur caught fire and the whole place lit up. I don't know exactly, but what Sodom and Gomorrah. Yeah. Gomorrah. God smote them, smote them. Yeah. Like God struck it down. Yeah. So I wonder, I was thinking last night, like if there's some horrible tragedy about to occur on the planet earth and God steps in and stops it with a natural disaster, like it would be horrible. Well, still. here's a question I have. I don't know if, if you guys have the answer for this. How did God smote Sodom and Gomorrah? Smite. Smote is the past tense. That's what I'm. That's right. Yeah, that's because he, he would smote, have them. smote them. Smote them. Right. How did he, he smote, smote them? I like smite it as the past. He tense. smote them. There was two. In such a path. <laughs> there was, it's two. Well, like he so already maybe, did something. How did he do it? So it's past tense. Wouldn't it be plural? Smite. <laughs> smite. <Smeet. laughs> How smitten were they? All right. But, but, sorry, but, interrupt. My, my 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 point was like, was it, it? Does the Bible describe it as a miraculous destruction, or did God use natural means to destroy them? Right? Did like did a volcano erupt and wipe them out? Or was it like a beam from the sky came in low orbit, ion cannoned them into into oblivion? I don't think there's a It was rains of sulfur and fire. Yeah, I oh. don't think there's a natural disaster attached That to sounds this. like a natural disaster. That could be a natural disaster. Rain of sulfur, sulfur and fire? Yeah, they had no, salt mines. Well, wouldn't like a, that be like, I mean, you could volcano. have, well, yeah, there were the salt mines and then Lot, his wife, turned into salt because she looked back. Was that Gamora? Yeah, weren't they Gamora? fleeing? Wasn't that them? I read, I watched something where they said it was a nuclear bomb. Oh yeah, that I was. aliens aliens <laughs> nuked Sodom and Gomorrah because they were debaucherous and spreading disease. And the reason why they said "Do not look back, or you'll turn to a pillar of salt" is because she got vaporized by the oh, shockwave. Oh. Mm. Well, that, but that's one of those ancient that. aliens things, you know what I mean? Yeah. Like, Run. Ancient so, alien theorists say right. yes. I, I'm not a I'm not an earthquake expert. They I think they call them geologists. Uh, but is the episode seismologist? Oh, see, there see, we you go. don't even have that. <laughs> one. There we go. Uh, I said I think, but You're not a vocabulist either. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> is the is the epicenter the strongest point or just the origin point? Like, so maybe Trump was shooting out the earthquake at his enemies because it did hit New York City. Like the eye of a hurricane. Oh. So Trump's in his underground lair and he's like, we're going to teach Letitia James a lesson. <laughs> Activate the device. I mean, look at that quote. He's like, it shook very hard. That has to be a Trump quote, right? Like, right. Ground shook shook very, very hard. <laughs> the hardest, the hardest 4.2 earthquake you can imagine. It would have been every moment of it. It would have been more, but then they reduced my bond amount. So I just threw him a little bit of a four point something. Well, so the reason I asked about whether, uh, Sodom and Gomorrah was destroyed by natural means. Like the question is, when God takes an action, does it appear miraculous? Like 
a right, magical right. beam of light or a volcano erupts. I think it depends on the, the miracle. But I mean, the, if you but, look at the Bible. But the this, this is why I asked, because if it is God uses natural means, then is is he smiting Trump? That's a good question. Or is I he think, has he smoten or smote New York? I think Trump. Like what I is said, the past tense of smite? <laughs> <laughs> I think that Trump. It, look at the electoral votes in New York, York and New Jersey. It is smote. I was right. Smote. Now, smote. No, I was right. Imagine if you were to break off those two states. Trump wins. Which so, states? New Jersey New York and, and New, New Jersey. Yeah. Oh, yeah. You break them off into the ocean, Trump wins. So like I said, I think it's the Superman 1 plot and Trump is Lex Luthor. Trying to remove that's right yeah new york so now we're talking about super weapons which we haven't but you can't yet. you can't remove new york you have to remove all of new england Wait, is that super which is okay is yeah it's okay? <laughs> still is that superman win? one or superman returns because no, that's one that's one huh? yeah yeah returns wasn't that where lex is trying to build a new island yeah and then it would the it would flood the half the united states but that's that's but the eastern half but that's not what he's oh he, yeah, he, yeah he, i'm referring to the lex okay. luther in one yeah. in one he wanted to remove a state he was going to knock California into the ocean, and then he would have all the beachfront property. Uh, oh, <laughs> property. He knew exactly, what, which is very Trumpian. Is that the original That's, Superman? Yeah, yeah. That's so first. 70s. Was that like late 70s, early 80s? 70, 78. That was so well. great. He bought all the property. Yeah. Lex that's Luthor, a, the real estate. That's such a sad mobile. version of Lex Luthor. Wow. Yeah. Yeah. The more modern yeah. versions are, are much yeah. better, where Laser he's just- the moon bases and stuff. Yeah, the more modern version, he just thinks- He's kind of like Dr. Doom. He thinks he's the only one who can save humanity, and he should be in charge. He's better yeah. than you. So do you think these are could have been weapons? Do you think these could be te like geo weaponry? I mean, I threw it out could the, be obviously. But I threw out the likely. Chinese super weapon early on. Yeah, we're, we got a split decision on the panel here. And but. then I was like, well, wait, it's an American super weapon. They did it in Taiwan to make it look like the Chinese. Now they do it to themselves, or maybe they're just getting it. This is on Trump. I mean, oh, Trump false flagged himself with his own earthquake device to make too. himself look like the victim. There you go. I don't know who's quaking. <laughs> which, I mean, who? Who's which, at the center of this? Which earthquake? which politician's favorite movie is the core? Because I believe they were using an earthquake <laughs> weapon, and that caused the events of that film. Yeah, they stopped the core from spinning yeah. because they were using earthquake weapons. And then they had to go that. down and kickstart the, the core again. What if this was Jewish people digging a tunnel too deep? I'm in Brooklyn. That proves it. That could do it. With shovels. <laughs> <laughs> Tunnels in Brooklyn. I, someone mentioned um, you yesterday, Tim, about the farmers in California having to suck the water out of like 20,000 feet down to get yep. to the water table. And then that caused it seismic caused, disruption. It causes the whole city to sink. Wow. Pulling the water out of the ground. Yeah. Sucking, I've heard about that, about oil. Obviously, fracking can do that, too. Well, it's because the Earth is flat, and beneath <laughs> the plane is the waters of the universe, and they're pulling that out and sinking us to the bottom of, of the dome that we're in. Mm. Oh. That, see, that, that proves it. I, I, my question Media is- Media as well write that seriously. Is maybe like this much concrete is like the safest thing that you could have? Because remember Casey Neistat stuck a camera, like he pulled up a whole Brooklyn sidewalk and it was just this much just yeah. separating it from the ground. Maybe that's enough. That's earthquake proof right there. I, I didn't hear anything about sidewalks collapsing in New York City. This like, was a pretty it's, low one. Four, I think it was 4.2. Yeah, but 4. the concrete's 8. like 4. I thought it was 4.8, right? 4. 8. Which is pretty big for the East Coast. For the East Coast, yeah. yeah. But there's 7.5 in, in Taiwan. It yeah. was, But they, they have more like experience with it. And they only like. lost like 10 people in yeah. that. I mean, buildings crashed onto themselves. Taiwan was you know? crazy. Like a whole apartment building fell over. Yeah, that yeah. was wild. Yeah. It's like stuff. a movie. Well, yeah. they were commuting, so like I guess a lot of people in those buildings were out and going yeah. to work. It was like nine a.m. over there or something. Crazy. Yeah, it was. It was like nine o'clock in the morning. I always think about like the if like if there were a real earthquake in New York because there's a fault line that goes right under Twenty Third Street. That would be really bad <laughs> for New York City. That, well, if there's a fault line there, that's only a matter of time. Yeah, it's dormant. It hasn't. It hasn't shook in quite a while. This was like the Ramapo fault, which was Jersey, obviously, but. Uh, New York could not withstand a proper earthquake. No. Yeah. Well, nope. it, it could be a problem. I know Haiti didn't have seismic activity for 200 years. And then all of a sudden that fault line, I forgot what it's called, activated. And they had just reinforced their buildings for hurricanes. Wow. So they were concrete and all that. Oh. And they were not earthquake proof at all. So that's why so many people died in that wow. earthquake 15 years ago. Which, you know, you know which one I'm referring to. It must be the end of days. Gosh, I, I wonder. I can't believe someone remembered the plot of Superman Returns. That was you. Oh. I'm, no, that was you. I'm, I'm no, I remember no, Superman yeah. Returns. Oh, did you? That, yeah. was, that was impressive. I, I was, as we were just talking, I was thinking like, God, it's going to say when you die, if you die, or when you speak with God, it'll be like, yeah, I was real, dude. The whole time, I guess. Why did it take you 48 or 500 years or whatever long? Why did it take you so many years to figure that out? 
why do you, why did you live your life? Like just de- like you need it. Like maybe can we, not. Can we, it's, it's I want to give this lady a special shout out from the post millennial woke New Jersey Senate candidate <laughs> says earthquake is evidence. The climate change, cri- climate crisis is real. Oh, I died when I saw this tweet. <laughs> Yo, oh. so I experienced funny. my first earthquake in New Jersey. We never get earthquakes. The climate crisis is real. I'm sorry. It's a cult. Oh, yeah. it's definitely a cult. It's definitely a cult. They call it the climate crisis is the culty part because there's a lot of crises in our climate at the moment. They keep changing. No, the, the culty defi- part is being like the the sun is the, the the pollution is causing earthquakes now. Yeah, it's like, oh, dude. I on. did a. I went back. I looked at every uh, prediction. Weather people, climatologists, geologists, whoever that 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 predict things terrible things are going to happen to. Uh, the environment in some way we're going to run out of oil or we're going to run out of natural resources or overpopulation and i went back to when i was born in 1966 i found 53 and they are oh in 53 not one climate crisis environmental crisis that these so-called experts have come up with has ever come true and now they want us to believe number 54 and you got to be crazy to believe 54. Why Why would we believe? Why would, Who would believe someone who's 0 and 53? I wouldn't believe someone who's 0 and 2. Are, are you trying to say that you're willing to let us have earthquakes just so you cannot drive an electric vehicle? Shame, shame on you, sir. The um the climate predictions that lead to these, what they call the climate crisis, the climate, the big one, the predictions are made without in, implementing uh, mitigating factors. I talked actually with Ben mm-hmm. Shapiro about this. Ben's really knowledgeable about this too. Um. Because things change. They, they, so they build a data and they're like, if things continue as they are in 10 years, we will be, things don't, they do not That's always, right. you learn a new technology completely. Like the when, horse poop in New York, they invented the automobile and it was completely, like right. it was when, the when, biggest problem on earth. When did Greta city. Thunberg, she was like, we have three years left or something. And like, yes. and then she deleted the tweet. Right. Yeah. So she had my, to my it. view is that was a load off my shoulders. I mean, like when Were you she, worried about it, when she tweeted that out and said, we had like three years left. Once we finally reached that point, I was just relieved. So I'm like, now it doesn't matter anymore. Exactly. And I'm chill. Like, we're done. It's wow. over. And they Party never say them. that. Well, they never say that. Gore. It's like a meteor thing. is right there in the sky about to hit us and take nothing we can do about it. Yep. So what I'm I ready always, to party, dude. What I always think about when, you know, people freak out about the climate and they're like, we have to do this and we have to change this about our lives and our, our culture and our whole civilization to appease the weather gods so that they don't kill us. It just seems so ancient, you know? It's like, what we do, what we do matters so much for the weather. We must change everything we do to appease the gods of the weather. And then just- it, And that's, that's, yeah, what they were, that's, that's what, what they were doing. In the Middle Ages. Yeah. How, how, many, how many tipping points or point of no returns have we passed by and they just like move the goalposts? <laughs> that's like, right. I, I feel like I'm crazy sometimes. Like maybe it is a Mandela effect. I'm like, didn't we hit this when I was like 15 years old? And people freak out. Like the kids are all freaking out. Yeah. They're like, oh, I can't have children or a normal life because of Yo. the climate, extinction rebellion. But when I was in grade school, uh, when I was probably like 10, they sh- they- we had in in class. They told us that we would run out of oil by like twenty ten. Right, because yeah. this was this was the mid nineties. They were like, oil is expected to run out at this point, and so we're getting worried about it. And I was like, whoa! And then like here I am, mitigating circumstance. They found new oil. Like and then that's they the wonder why you're a neurotic. Or they figured neurotic. out how to use right? less yeah. oil in a it, combustive process. It's, it's, it's like it's, the end of days syndrome. We just all humans always just want to believe that we're well, at the absolute pinnacle it is, of it's, the it's, end. It's, it's also we, the way we measure like resources is whether or not it is like a, an oil reserve is whether or not it's financially viable to tap it but the thing is is if you run out of the cheap easy oil to tap or it reduces then expensive oil like canadian tar sands or like venezuela has tar sands oil that becomes more economically viable so that goes into the reserves so you can look at a map of like the countries with the greatest oil reserves and you'll see like randomly in like the 2010s uh, when gas prices went up under bush canada and venezuela go to number one and number three on the list and you're like but they didn't just find that oil. They always had it. It just was not, the technology didn't exist. It was not viable. So to your point about how it doesn't measure like the change, it just says if we continue at this rate and we have this much, this is why all those Malthusian economic predictions never come true. They're like, we have this many people, this much food is being grown. It's like, yeah, but when there's more people, we think of, we try to yeah, make new strains. Out, yeah, right, right. We'll be able to start making oil in laboratories like we, they're doing blue crew we, we, we've, making, we've already made that yeah like when you start 3d especially years. once you start 3d printing atomically into molecules dude we don't need to find more it's not about drilling anymore it's really about what we're doing with the waste byproduct of the burning of it and it, that's turning it into carbon and, dioxide and, graphene and, and the like solution that. is always leftism the solution is always socialism it's always 
more government, less freedom. They never come up, you know, it, like if we found out that earthquakes were caused because there wasn't enough carbon in the air, they would never tell us that. If, if that's what we figured out, because mm -hmm. no, no they, one can't they, have more carbon in the air because then you'll enjoy your air conditioning. We, no, 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 but th they would, but then they would just make a reason why that means we need communism. It, yeah, or, or they would do that, or they would hide They'd it. They'd be like, know? oh, well, yeah. because of that, we have to put carbon, everyone has to have a carbon vehicle, right. so you need to sign up for this government program. Right, everybody, here's, here's everybody, we're going to center, everybody has to have air conditioning, everybody has to have a, a gas grill. Yeah, that's what they would do. That means all of the newcomers that are coming in and staying at these shelters are going to need their own air conditioners and cars as well because it's a mandate to prevent the, the catastrophe with earthquakes. Yeah, it's always that's always the solution. It's never more freedom. It's never just leave me the hell alone. You can turn it into graphene, the carbon, which is this black powder. It's just pure carbon, hexagonal lattice carbon. I don't have a diagram next to me, but um, pure carbon, reusable, put it in building materials, make electronics out of it and stuff. But the problem is if, if private companies start doing that, we might take too much out of the air. And then we'll start killing off the plant life. So we might need not a communist dick mandate, some sort of central mandate to make sure that we don't, as a species, nah. eradicate our, our air supply. We won't. We'll just burn gas. Create, just if overcharge there, if, our if, if production, there, if coal production. If there are news reports being like, too much carbon is being taken out of the air, people will be like, I guess I'll drive more. <laughs> Hell yeah, dude. <laughs> you, that, that, Turn the, up the air conditioning. And, it enhances so much of our right. society. Carbon. Or carbon based what love. trees are made of and then and then the people that tell us that the that the oceans are going to rise they move to the coast <laughs> that's yeah. my favorite one that's you know uh, uh obama have, have you ever seen that video where the guy says i can i can d debunk climate change right now very easily the banks banks are giving mortgages on on real estate in miami beach right he's like if if that if it were real all of these banks would be legally required to have this, like a red notice, bold, like this property will be inviolable in 30 years. Exactly. Your, your investment will be zero and this loan will be dead. Yep. But yep. they don't have to do that. But what if, what if Al Gore's buying beachfront property just to be the first to say, I told you so? And it's what not, if? It's not hypocrisy. <laughs> I had a webcam what set up in my living room. The reason they're coming out and saying beachfront property is worthless, it's going to be underwater, is to drop the prices and buy it up. Dude. Then they can get cheap property. Just like Lex Luthor. That's kind of the Lex yeah, Luthor thing. That's exactly yeah, that's it. Yeah. Wow, that proves it. That may be what Trump's up to. Because the the property in Miami Beach was shockingly cheap. I mean, it's relatively cheap. These six, 60 floor penthouses, condos are like $3,000 a month to rent, to rent. Three, you know, I thought they were going to be 6000 I've but it's I, cheap. I've played Civilization. I know what happens. You build water <laughs> barriers. They build sea that's, barriers. That's exactly yeah. right. When you're, when, so, in, so this is funny because the game Civilization has climate change where the water's level, water levels rise and stuff. And... Uh, you, you can build sea barriers around your cities. That's all you got to do. That's it. And then CNN is telling us that, that, the, that the oceans are going to rise. And what do they do? They leave Atlanta where they'd be safe and they move right to the edge of the water in New York. Mm -hmm. Or what you can do is do what Chicago did and just raise the whole city up. Yep. How yeah. do they do it? They just built, they like, it's crazy. When you go to Lower Wacker, it's all steel beams and pillars. But when you're in, on the upper level, it, it's just like a, it, you, you think you're on a street. Oh, I know. Okay. I know. So that. it's crazy because like you go to New York and you like walk down the street, you're, that, that is asphalt over gravel on dirt and bedrock and stuff. You go to Chicago and you're walking on the sidewalk and underneath you, you are walking on a bridge. Mm -hmm. It's And the whole city, like the whole, not the whole city, but this whole portion of the city. It's crazy. Was it a flood well, in zone? New York, underneath underneath New York, in a lot of places, there's more New York. There's like buildings underground. There's They're not Oh yeah, there's use. like abandoned railroad tracks yeah. with ghosts. There's all kinds of Saw that one's stuff in a movie. down there. Plus, if, it, if the planet warms, if that's true, that'll save lives. We'll have more food. Uh, more people die from the cold than the heat and oh. we figure it out. And then there's a solution to the Israel thing. When Antarctica melts, maybe all the Jews can move there. There you go. Mm -hmm. Wow. Well, look, we've just solved all the problems. Okay. Climate change is saving us. <laughs> Thank you, Friday. Making peace in the Middle East. <laughs> Making peace in the Middle East. I didn't believe in climate change before, but now I'm pro climate yeah. change. <laughs> We're watching it change before our eyes. Subtly, slowly, but it's changing. Always. But you can always rest assured that some crackpot leftists will have no idea what they're talking about and just say these things. But uh, okay. Also, that, why does it say from Earth on no. her tweet? <laughs> yeah. I don't she's, know. she's clever. She's cute. But it's because she's not on Earth and she like set her location right. as Earth. Yeah. <laughs> she's on Mars. <laughs> yeah. Did she get community noted? I can't see that. 
Did they come uh, to the Yes. I, I think the not earth, a, it's, they, it's not here in the image, but oh. yeah, it says New Jersey sits New Jersey sits on a fault line, has nothing to do with climate change. <laughs> I love community notes. I, I think the earth is like, I'm a citizen of the world, just so you know. Like she decided to go with that <laughs> yeah, location. Yeah, it was a yeah. specific choice. She's precious. But yeah. The, the final point about climate change I'll, I'll make is that, you know, they'll talk they never talk about adaptation. Like we adapt to everything, all different kinds of circumstances. And there are actually people who are like, oh, adapting to it is just like accepting the problem and you're never gonna change change but it's like okay but you told me manhattan's gonna be underwater mm -hmm. like building a barrier to save one of the economic epicenters of the world seems like way smarter than relocating one of the economic epicenters of the world like how much does it cost to build a sea barrier versus moving manhattan plus you'd have like, to go to war with china to get them to yeah comply there i mean there's nothing we nothing we can do is going to change I my, my friends i none of this matters okay <laughs> the, the eclipse is coming <laughs> and the rolling stone says the far right is crawling with eclipse conspiracy theories. Everyone has lost their GD minds. And then they say, blah, 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 blah. What are the conspiracies? What, are they, what, what is it? Do they even have any conspiracies here? NBC's bringing back heroes again, and this is all publicity. This is, look at all right? this patter. There's nothing in even this article. This is stupid. They didn't even, okay. Well, I'm going to give it to uh, USA Today, who actually showed us the conspiracies. Debunking misinformation conspiracies sparked by 2024 solar eclipse. All right, you ready for this one? First, CERN will start up April 8th to open a portal during the eclipse. Yeah, I think we... False. <laughs> no, no. I've not heard anyone claim they want to open a portal. That's just this, a natural byproduct. This, by this is what they do. CERN. What is true is that CERN is going to be operating the Large Hadron Collider on April 8th. The post is wrong about both the timing and the nature of CERN's work. CERN's equipment began operating in March, a month before the eclipse, and the technology is nowhere near strong enough to open a portal or a black hole. They don't know that. That's USA today. wrong. That's wrong. As they know. CERN has. I'm pretty sure. Okay, I, I got a fact of this one, but I'm pretty sure CERN's been able to make black holes. That was the plot of Superman Returns, wasn't it? Building black holes. <laughs> they should be doing this in magnetic confinement. In okay, orbit. I'm wrong. Yeah, they can't make them. I thought they could. But uh, uh, okay, all right, we'll, we'll give them that one. But the, the, what people have been pointing out is that CERN is operating on April 8th. What they do is they add this nonsense to open a portal so they can call it false. Here we go. Right. April. So it's, it's also, hold on. They're like, they started operating in March. It's like, well, these are like some of the smartest people in the world. Do you think they don't know what eclipse schedule? Like that is right. not, that's not address the point. I can tell you but it's build a, a black it's, hole. There's not even an eclipse over CERN. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> okay, here we go. April 8th, solar eclipse will cause three to five days of darkness. False. Who claimed that? Okay, whatever. Now, here, here's why I love this. Because I saw this and I was like, wait, wait, how did they say this is false? It says NASA is launching three rockets at three moons during the eclipse. False. NASA is launching three rockets to study the eclipse, but not at three moons because we only have one. Who said we had three? I think they, they do, make do these they, things up. Do they say where the claim came from? Do they link to like even some errant tweet somewhere? Or are yeah, they launching maybe. them at Phobos? And what is this? Like three Mars? rockets. What is this? I mean, who said it? I mean, it's easy. A to... March 30th Facebook video. There's a man talking about NASA's plans. They grab some random right. yokel on Facebook and they're right. like, better run this one. They're creating this far right no, no, hold on, hold on. category good. thing. Eclipse crosses seven cities named Nineveh in uh, crosses 2017 eclipse path in Little Egypt. They say it's partly false. There's two, two Ninevehs, not I, seven. I heard that one, but that's not a conspiracy theory in any way. Is that what they're saying? Is these are conspiracy theories? Yeah, yeah that's well, here we go. wrong information. A bird man was seen days before the eclipse. The photo of a silhouette in the sky has circulated online since November. Wow, that's good. Three rockets being launched by NASA uh, are part of a sex magic ritual. Wow. That not, I believe. You know that yeah, for I sure. Yeah. <laughs> Makes sense. <laughs> well, they named the rockets APAP. Did you, did you, you know that? <laughs> they named it what? They named the rockets the APAP rockets. What's APAP is, is the Egyptian god who, who chases the sun and defeats it every oh, day. Oh, defeats it. Oh, I see. Yeah, like, I don't know, like, Mouse was saying, uh, Michael Mouse was saying that he eats it. I don't know that he yeah, eats it's like it. a snake that eats the end of his tail every no, day or Ra, something. No, he battles Ra and defeats Ra every day. And then Ra strikes back in the morning. Mm -hmm. wow. That's just... The, yeah, no joke. These guys are into the occult, for sure. If yeah, they're naming yeah. the rockets after Egyptian gods, they're... Yeah, that's definitely occultish behavior. It's definitely. And yeah. I say the occult, but there's more than one <laughs> occult. Like, there's a lot of occultish, you know, thoughts and... The occult eye. And you can't have a cult occult without eye. it. Or you can't have a cult that, without it. That one on the cult. bottom is the best one. <laughs> Which one? <laughs> right there. The last one. Claim sun and moon will not be aligned for 2024 eclipse. Rating false. They will. <laughs> that, that's, that's an eclipse. That's what, what an eclipse, what an eclipse is. is. Yeah, so I guess we had an annular eclipse, which is where um, the moon is further away from the sun, so it uh, from, from the earth, so it doesn't cover the sun completely. 
and then, you know, you can actually see the sun. And then we're having now is a total eclipse where the moon is close to the sun, so it looks bigger, and it's going to block the whole thing. That's cool. pretty cool. Yeah, oh. it's going to be cool. I guess and we should do course, something for it. What people don't misunderstand is that Monday. what they're wrong about with CERN is that CERN's not firing up to open a portal during the eclipse. The issue is that when the sun and the moon align, it creates a portal. CERN is firing up to create a, a force field to protect the Earth from the demon hordes that come now from Now you're talking. Portal. That's true. Yeah. That's right. Hordes. That's true. <laughs> when I <laughs> envision <laughs> hyper. Why didn't USA Today? Fetch Someone it wants out. to be in USA Today. I think these these suns, these stars, can are like magnifying lenses for energy that can come at you right through them, and it accelerates it. So, like that, when I think about super acceleration through the universe through like warp drive or things like that. <laughs> yeah, I picture it, aiming at a black hole, hitting it as fast as you can right through the center. It's a charged black hole, and then it spits you out the other side at light speed. And then as soon as you get close to a sun or some other magnetic thing, it slows you down and you come back to normal space. So I don't know if that's going to, if this, if there's something going on here with magic and magnetics and energy. That, pro that, that proves it. If they're trying to, because they're, they're firing rockets that are measured disturbance in atmosphere on a time when the moon is yeah. blocking the sun. So there's a reason they want to test the disturbance yeah. when the sun is blocked out magnetically or whatever kind of disturbances they're looking for. I just want to see Trump stare at the eclipse again. Yeah. That was a good one. And that's, a, that's the funny thing because they, they, they love to attack him for it. He glanced at it briefly <laughs> and they're like, he looked at it. He looked at it, everybody. He's so dumb. It's like, dude, that's you what can't. Normal people would do. Though. Everybody but, but does it. That's not the, the issue is that people stare at the eclipse. Not that you look up for a second and go, oh, look, there's an eclipse. Yeah. You know, not on the list of theories is that the Earth Kingdom is going to invade the Fire Nation on that day. That's true. Yeah. yeah also, Ian stares at the sun. <laughs> yeah, gaze rather. I'd like to say instead of stare, but what you do is called sun gazing. It's an ancient thousand year old. Don't, definitely do not listen to him. Do not yeah. do this. Well, listen. I'm not telling you to do it. Just listen. It's, Tim, um, Tim Cast IRL is not a medical show. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Through the ages, they've done this practice called sun gazing, where when the sun is very low to the horizon in the morning or in the in the evening, um, you let it into the, and it hits the back of your eye and it kind of stretches and builds the muscles in your eye. And if as long as you're not focusing your eyes right on the really hot burning thing, you're not going to burn it. You kind of like let it. Oh, you don't really even like look, necessarily look at. It, you let the sun into the back of your eye and wash over the retina. I found that it melts away the floaty things. You ever get those things that float in your eye? The floaters. They They're melt away it, when you sun gaze. At least I found they melted mine away. And also my vision got better when I was away from the computer gazing at the sun. Because well, it was like LASIK. He was looking around the sun. <laughs> yeah. and he was singeing the, yeah. the ring of his cornea. So you might want to repeat that. Yeah, got to go. <laughs> yeah, it was wild. <laughs> Nuts. Sun gazing is the practice of looking directly at the sun. It is it is the unsafe practice. <laughs> That's what it says. Yeah. It's like raw milk. I was looking directly at the sun. Oh, sure. It's like the raw milk of healing yourself. It's done as a spiritual or religious practice, most often dawn or dusk. The human eye is very sensitive, and exposure to direct sunlight can lead to solar retinopathy. How do you pronounce this? Pterygium, cataracts, and potentially blindness. Yeah. Studies have shown that even when viewing a solar eclipse, the eye can still be exposed to harmful levels of ultraviolet radiation. It, sun gazing is a lot like playing with fire. It, it's, it, I would not recommend that somebody just go do it. Like, um, it, if don't you focus your home. eye, Basically, what's that? Don't try this at home. No, no, no. Talk it's, to a doctor. But it is an ancient practice. Do it. <laughs> and if you focus your eye on the sun, man, it will rock your, do not do that. You do not focus your eye on it. Like that is when you lose. Don't stare at the sun yeah. ever for any stare, reason. It's not the si gaze. That's why they call it gazing uh -huh. instead of staring. Because you're really not focused on the sun. You're focused in the direction of it, letting the light hit the back of your eye. There's also people that they do, what, what, what do they call it? Butt sunning or whatever? Oh yeah. Butt sun sun balling or something? Sun what is has, they 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 get naked and then you hold your legs up in the air so the sun can hit your crack because they're like it's the one part of the body that never gets sun. I'm, you know, I'm 58 years old. I've had HBO for 40 years. <laughs> I never heard of any of this stuff. It's just Apparently. amazing. Yeah, yeah there's Apparently like people on I've Instagram and they have pictures where it's like a guy and a woman and they'll be <laughs> naked. Like you won't see anything, but they'll you'll see the people with the sun in the horizon and they're spreading their legs open. That's yeah, and they, and they do that thing where they have the lasers. You know what I'm talking about? People put the, the red light on their balls or oh, whatever. Oh, no, I didn't know that. Oh, yeah, I have heard oh that. Also, gosh. icing your balls, apparently. <laughs> oh it's called gosh. the perineum sunning. Don't, don't do that red light thing if you have a cat. By Luke Rutkowski was telling me about <laughs> icing your balls. Really <laughs> yeah. Oh, Luke was saying about icing your balls. Last huh? week he was telling me about it. He's like, apparently it's great for you. People do it if you can do it right and you do it, you know, it can help semen production. I don't, I don't, I don't even think, like I've been looking into the ice bath stuff and I don't think I'm going to do it. It sounds like it's stupid. It does seem kind of dumb. Yeah, I'm not doing that. Well, it inhibits protein synthesis. Yeah, I'm not And they're kidding. like, what does it do? Okay, so it basically causes all your blood vessels to constrict, squeeze out lactic acid, and it reduces your recovery time while stopping the recovery process. And I'm like, okay. So your recovery time ends because you stop recovering. You jump in ice, your body stops healing, 
what was the point of working out in the first place? What's the plus? Yeah, like, I don't know. Yeah, it's um, you want to do it when you're not working out. Or if you want to build muscle, don't do it because it'll inhibit muscle growth. But then why do it at all if you're not working out? What's the point? I think because it sends your body into a shock protein state where it, it, it starts to go into like um your immune system kicks on and it starts cleaning up the body. Shock proteins, check those out. And Rhonda Patrick does a lot on shock proteins and temperatures um, and, and fasting. Fasting has a similar uh, result of shock protein synthesis, I think is the case. But Rhonda Patrick's the doctor to listen to on that. Wouldn't you rather just watch TV? Mm-hmm. And jump in the. <laughs> it's really good. Well, there's the ice bath I've never done. There's the cold plunge I've done. Yeah, those are great. Those I, I actually craved like it was a food. I've never in my life this has never happened before. I wanted to eat it the next day. I, that cold plunge affected my body so much. The next day I was hungry for it. My my stomach wanted it. What was the food? A cold plunge. Oh. <laughs> A wild feeling. What? Yeah, my body was literally. <laughs> I was having hunger cravings for the cold plunge. Really? Yeah. Wow. But is that a good thing? I think so. It felt like a oh, man. Let's get another meal. Really? Let's go. Yeah. Ian skipped all of his workouts this week. No, I worked out today by myself oh, okay. for about twenty-five minutes. Well, he skipped the three training sessions. Yeah, had. but I did get my license. Or started to my driver's license. I've oh, you drive again? Putting that off for a while. Yeah. I know a lot of people who can't drive for some reason. I just COVID freaked me out. I didn't want to go in there with my mask and sit around and wait and. My license had expired, so I was really? just like, I work from home. I Uber everywhere. It was, it was relatively convenient. I would get rides, but it, it was a burden. It became a burden. You couldn't update online because of the COVID thing? It yeah, that's what I did, I'm in, sure. No, it was stolen in South America like five years ago, and I just lapsed so long that I had to go get a new oh, one. Yeah. Take the test again. I took the test. I'll tell you about that. That was wild. I, I updated mine online during COVID, and I was supposed to retake a picture, but I didn't have to. So I have like 17-year-old me on my driver's license. Yeah, you should see mine. I looked like 30. a kid. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> mine is my like hair's that all too. brown. It's yeah. still there. Because I, I, I got my like non-driver's ID, and they took a picture of that, and then I used that, and I got a learner's permit. And I had the learner's permit for 10 years before I got my license. <laughs> and I got Why my not? license on which, literally which the last- Which means you got it twice because it's five years. So. No, I never had a license before no, that. No, I meant the permit. You have to get it twice. So you renewed it. No, it, I, it, they gave it to me for nine years. Oh. Yeah. Wow. Oh, here? Or no, here? In, in New York. Because wow. my brother believe... had to renew it. Same deal. But like... I got it on the very last day that it was possible, which was my 45th birthday. <laughs> yeah. I think Arizona is like 50 years your license is good for. Really? That's really? Nice. some insane amount of time. But don't they want to update your picture? Because, I mean, you're going to look a lot different at, you know, 70 than 20. I don't know. Yeah, maybe it's... I, I, I could have sworn someone showed me an Arizona ID last year. That's forever. awesome. I'm, my, yeah. my, my, my first... um. With the passport ID, I looked like this hippie dude. I didn't care about, and I was just like full flow. Yeah, they, they expire on your 65th birthday. And then yeah. as the years went on, my pictures became more and more sad. Like you can see the pain <laughs> so, of reality kicking in. But you, you I wonder need, what this new one. You do need like. to update your photo every 12 years, and the license hasn't expired to your 65. Wow. Well, that yeah. makes sense. That makes sense. That's but, crazy. Yeah, it's going to be my first real ID. Do you know what kind of tracking mechanisms these things have? Isn't it like biometric data or something like that? I don't know. They're probably just RFID. I think the the main point of RFI uh, of uh, real ID was so that there was one national database for all IDs from all states, basically stripping you of uh, stripping you of your sovereignty and mm-hmm. destroying states' rights, mm-hmm. and making it so I don't have to spend nine days getting people to mail things to that guy, to that guy, to that guy every time I move states, which will be the upside. And then of the it. best part is, in fifty years, they're going to do the same thing with NATO, and then you're going to have to get your updated NATO real ID, so that we can have one database between France, the UK, New York, Illinois. We got to call something other than NATO, though. I'm down with a one world government as long as it doesn't have much strength. Like if we have the states' rights still, but there's like a central authority that's like weak. Yeah, but like I was like watching this watching this commercial that's and there was this lady singing about taking some drug for her A one C or something. What is A one C? I don't know, uh, but cares? my girlfriend was like, I hate this commercial. And I was like, see, down, now don't you understand Bill Gates? Right. He's sitting here watching these Ozempic commercials and he and then he's just thinking to himself, like, they all must go. Right. I'm That's... like, wow, you know, I can't blame him. I saw the same commercial. Logan's are on. Yeah, Logan's are on. I was thinking I actually mentioned this to the suicide pods in Canada, these this made program and things. <laughs> and I'm like, pods. we were joking, we we're kind of talking about like, well, what's it gonna do? This and I was like, well, and also lower the chance of them having a revolution. Because a lot of those angry young men that normally go to war end up going to the pod. And yeah, what's gonna happen is they're gonna they're gonna they're gonna capture some young re- rebellious man. And then they're going to come out and be like, unfortunately, he opted for the suicide booth. Exactly. Well, I'm thinking yeah. more less nefarious that instead of becoming rebellious, they'll just become depressed and suicidal. And so society will point them in that direction because they don't want them to become enraged. They know it's bad. They're just like, well, just know. cut their balls off. It's kind of happening in this country with, with the drugs. You know, you have a lot of people. It's, it may not be a suicide, but suicides are way up. Drug, drug deaths are way up. 
and it's all sort of this cultural attack on, on the working people. Yeah, yeah it's, it, it's is, a death it cult. is a cultural yeah. attack on the working people. Yeah, so you, and they're just being replaced with like, you know, cheap immigrants. Yeah, and you yeah. They, you hear stories too where I live about people. They have pride. Things aren't going well, and then the government will come in and say, "No, you, you got to get these food stamps. You got to get the you got to put fluoride in your drinking water. Mm -hmm. so, you know, this is what's best for you. This is what's best for you, and then you create a dependent class we, out of it. We don't have fluoride in our drinking water. It's some of the best drinking water. It just comes straight out of the ground. I've ever had in my life. And it's the well uh, water. We have two nine-stage filters. We have a basic one, and then we have uh, w one for the sink. So it goes through twice. The last one adds minerals back into it because you don't want to have the stripped water or whatever. But uh, yeah, no fluoride. We take we we add potassium. I think you need potassium if you get if you get well water. You need to add that because otherwise you won't have potassium. You can't just mm. eat a bunch of bananas. You can you can eat a bunch of bananas too if you want to do that. There yeah. is an amount of bananas you can eat that will give you radiation poisoning. Oh but no way! You will yeah. die from eating the bananas before you'll get radiation poisoning. Uh -oh. I was reading you that know on the internet or something. I Roughly love bananas. how many? <laughs> is it like a thousand or or? It's probably it's some absurd lot. number. I'm a big. Fr I, you ever I hear the story about the guy? Uh, you ever Dude. hear the story about the guy who died from eating too many red lobster biscuits? Gross. Gross. Apparently, it's like an urban legend. I don't know if it's true, but he was like sitting. He was waiting for a friend or something, and so they gave him a, tr a thing of biscuits, the cheddar biscuits, and he ate them, and he just annihilated the whole basket. And then they were like, "They're endless." So he's like, "I'll get another one." And then someone said, "Like, man, you could break the record." And then he was like, "I could break the record." And then he died. Wow. Mm. From eating too many biscuits. I don't know if anyone's going to get this reference, but did they offer him a very thin mint? I vaguely get it. Monty Python, meaning a mm. life. Ah. Oh. The guy explodes at you the end. I thought that wasn't Oh, funny. the last thing. Oh. I hate thing. being old. I, hate I, being I old. vaguely remember. Like, the, the thin mint was the last thing. Yeah. that right, the thin, Just a thin mint, sir. And then he just explodes. But <laughs> it's probably getting old. I don't know the new references and nobody knows mine. I saw um, the Monty Python Quest for the Holy Grail. One of the, my favorite movies it's of all so time. Good. But yeah. then I saw Life of Brian and the one you just mentioned. Uh, my, meaning of Life. Meaning of Life. And I didn't laugh much really? at all. You didn't laugh at Life of Brian? Well, I That's tried so to funny. watch it and I stopped. Oh my gosh. All right, let's go to Super Chats. If you okay. haven't already, would you kindly smash that like button, subscribe to the channel, share the show with your friends, head over to TimCast.com, click join us, become a member to support the show because this show is made possible thanks to part of viewers like you. And now I'll just read your Super Chats. Not that we're uh, running out of time here. Nyancat says, hello world. Hello Nyancat. I remember you. That was fun. Who's Nyancat? What? Nyan Cat. You don't know Nyan Cat? No. You know the the Nyan Cat. cat. Oh, Come now on. I know who you're talking about. The rainbow, the rainbow no pixelated idea. cat. The Pop Tart. Oh, cool yeah. Something. The Pop Tart. I think cat. I might know what you're talking about now. That's a reference I'm too old for. Yeah. All right. Barely a millennial says, "Woke up on Easter to the voice of God in my head saying, if you smoke one more cigarette, you'll get lung cancer. Stop now.' It was pretty scary, and I haven't had one since. Oh, Demons well done. don't give give up that easy though. Constantly nudging. Well done though. Absolutely. And don't give in to the demons. They're going to be clawing at you and screaming in your face, but do not give in. Dude, that. You can do it. Awesome. Should celebrate yeah. with a cigar. Oh, my goodness. <laughs> don't listen yeah, to John the John over speaks, here. man. It changes your DNA. <laughs> T-Bomb says, I have the one they call Clint Torres held captive. Submit to my demands if you want to hear howdy people again, boobies. Okay. They didn't give us any demands. There's no demand there. Yeah. I demand you supply me a demand. <clears throat> Oh, okay, someone's making fun of Lizzo and uh, Salty Bag of Nuts says, my wife is a vet. She is very informed about bird flu and is very worried. If any animal tests positive, they are put down as well as all animals on the property. How do you think this, this will affect farms? Yeah, they're going to, you're going to eat the bugs and you'll be happy. This happened so, here, here's with what you chickens do. recently. That's why In like Texas or something. Yeah. Okay, here's what you do. All right, here, here's, here's what you do. All right. If you want people to eat the bugs and be happy first, you take the beef, the chicken, the lamb, all of it away, okay? Then you say, always oh, got his bugs, and they're upset. But then you take the bugs away, let them starve for a little bit, then they'll eat mud. Then you give them the bugs back, and they'll thank you. And they're grateful. That's yeah, then right. you're just grateful. Say, thank you, sir. Mm -hmm. We are thankful for the bugs. They will be happy. Juan Castle says, Tim, enough of the shenanigans. Bring on the Donald. Enough. Yes, perhaps. Episode 1000 is coming up, guys. Yeah. That would be uh, cool. Eclipse Day is episode 999. Oh, wild. wild. Don's the guy who'll be like, for episode 1000, I'll do it. <laughs> like, <laughs> completely arbitrary. I love it. But it, it means something. All right. The last campaign says, did you hear about the Tarrant County Central Appraisal District in Texas getting hacked? The website has been down for weeks, and they are apparently holding homeowners information ransom. 700K. I did not know that. 
Hmm. DJ Bell says, as as a born and raised Californian, a 4.8 isn't uh, even worth talking about. Yeah, I was in I was in something comparable in Virginia. We were sitting in my friend's living room and there was a cup on the on the coffee table and we saw it like the rings in it. And then we were like, is there an earthquake? Mm -hmm. And then we were like, I don't know. And then we went on the internet and looked and like, oh, yeah, look at that. There's an earthquake. Oh. I was at this one in L.A., this earthquake. I was sitting in a restaurant and it started to shake. And I was like really in like a spiritual like God mode and was like just pray with the earth. And I stayed really calm and breathed and it slowed down and stopped. I was like, maybe I was in part of that or not. I don't know, but I, I didn't panic. I lived Other in East LA. I lived in East LA for about nine years and we didn't know if it was an earthquake or a helicopter. Sometimes it's just a little helicopter yeah. looking for a, you know, the crips and the bloods, but it was, all, but you just, after a while, you just got used to it. You just turned up the TV and. The biggest plot twist in Tim's story is it wasn't an earthquake. It was actually a T-Rex. <laughs> From the past. The story was pretty crazy. He was at Jurassic Park, you know? He was the he was the the, the scientist. He was that kid. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, Justin Pardo says, first time chatting. A bit of self congratulations for my kids' clothing line. Psyched Kids Clothing just got approved on Public Square. I post new designs every three weeks. Come check it out. Love you, Ian. Oh, that's awesome, dude. What's the what's the store called? Psych Psyched Kids Clothing. Nice. So uh, Taylor Silverman brought this up to me, and this is uh, we are massively winning the culture war. I just got to tell you. Something called AWH, Skateboard Distribution, is on Public Square, and I was really surprised to find out. One of the largest distributors of skateboard equipment, boards, etc. So this is like a massive chunk of the skate industry. Being on Public Square, is a, that's huge. And then this is really, really amazing as well. Let me see if I can pull this one up to see if I can find this. I can't believe this. Flip Skateboards is on uh, Public Square. One of the biggest and most notable skate companies in the world is on Public Square. Yo, we're we're winning like crazy. That's Guys, wild. sign up for Public Square. Download the Public Square app. That's amazing. Love it. Yeah, basically, if you don't like that Bezos is, does what Bezos does and Amazon does what they does what they're doing, Public Square is going to it is this alternate marketplace. And I hope that Public Square becomes the new Amazon, where you got to believe in American values and and before you can, uh, you know. So you, you sell, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, you don't I want like any of that, that weird. You know, the, the issue for the issue uh, with it for me is most of these companies don't know or care. They're simply saying, "What's what's the trending thing? Tell me what to say, and I'll say it." I don't want those weak spineless that weak spineless garbage, right? You go to Public Square; these companies are like, "No, I believe in America. I believe in family. I believe in my values." And I'm like, "Okay, I respect that." They're they're saying before they even sell you the product, they know what they believe in and why they do what they do. These other companies are just like, look, man, I don't know. I don't care. I'll just say whatever I have to say. And I'm like, yeah, you're spineless. Can other company, anybody sign up for Public Square? Any company? Right Pretty, I, I, they, there's a thing that says like, you, you by signing up, you agree with these things. And it says like, I, I support the family. I support the First Amendment rights. That's and the awesome. Values. It's great. I love it. Is there a way you can get kicked out? Is there something I'd they can do? Yeah. There's probably terms, I would think. Yeah. But I don't have the answer. But yeah, I would imagine. If not, that's a big problem. Yeah. Because they then, should reserve the right. Then you just have to sound sincere. That's crazy. Yeah. But I'll give a shout out to uh, Reliance Skateboards. They're on Public Square as well. And uh, who else is on here? There's a lot more stuff on here than the last time I checked it out. It's cool. I know. It's so it's so awesome seeing uh, Public Square grow. And mm -hmm. you'll start seeing companies like Disney on there. That's when you know you've won. Because well, they'll Disney just say yes on the, yeah, I, I fully agree that. with the United States and the ethos of the United States. And they'll say yes anyway, just to make money. Yep. And then they're starting to agree and, and meme into the, the new way. They, if they, they just need to be kicked out. If they if they sign because <laughs> they're lying big diz <laughs> no let them lie yeah let them lie and then if they violate those 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 like clear if they do these things then you can say like hey you lied but i'm like we get to the point where people who are not political are just like oh yeah sure i like trump that means we're winning that's true they, they believe history is on the side of we're on the right side of history i think this from public square let me just tell you guys you don't got to know anything about skateboarding other than AWH distribution is one of the largest. So the way it works is lo like skate shops have distributors who collect all of the gear, boards, clothes, all this stuff, and then they order directly from a warehouse. This is one of the biggest. So, uh, and flip skateboards, Jeff Rowley, uh, Tom Penny, uh, who else is, I, I, I haven't followed their team in a long time, but these are, Jeff Rowley's in the Tony Hawk video game series. So this is as popular and mainstream Olympic level stuff as you can get. And this means that they're publicly, when you go on, when your company's on public square, you're making a public statement about your politics. That is epic. 
Shout out to Flip. Shout out to AWH. People, a bunch of uh, uh, pro skateboarders have been complaining that skateboarding's woke, and it's weak, and that like I think skateboarding should not be weak. It's yeah, like sort of a tough. It's sport. like one of the most grinding sports you can do. You know, I, I think skate skateboarders are the lowest tier professional athletes, and the reason for it is they don't take care of themselves. They drink, they smoke, they do drugs. Uh, they don't like they, they don't act like athletes. Like you look at gymnasts, and it's like they've got personal trainers, and the trainers being like, "Today you're going to do you know calf stretches, and then you're going to do squats because that's going to improve when you do this." Skateboarders are like, "I woke up at 3 p.m., <laughs> pulled a burrito out of the fridge. At five, we're going to go skate with the guys. I'm going to bring some beers." They act like artists. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah <laughs> true. Yep. Andrea Viola says, "Tim, I was gifted the line of Casper as coffee in." Uh, I was gifted the line of Casper as coffee is my thing, and I am somewhat a coffee snob. It is absolutely fantastic. Bravo, my new fave. Thank you very much. I gotta say, like, they're good. Like, uh, Rise of the Brito Jr. was first my favorite, and then Appalachian Nights is the only thing I want to drink. I don't know why it's so good. It's my favorite one. It's crazy how good Appalachian Nights is. And, it, and this is not even an opinion. We, we, we struggle to keep it in stock. It wasn't even the one that we were promoting. The the when we launched, we were like, "Rise with Roberto Junior Breakfast Blend will be our signature." Like, that's why we put the rooster on it. And then Appalachian Nights was like, "Well, we just need like." I, I was like, "I personally like a good dark roast as long as it's not burned or anything." And then when you look at the website, the reason the first one that appears everywhere is because it's the highest selling, and it's always selling out. It could be because it's uh, starts with an A, so it's at the top alphabetically. Nope. Also, it's the best <laughs> brand. It's the best title. The it, Appalachian Nights is so awesome. Yeah. It's a good, yeah, it's, it's a good it's name. It's a good name. There yeah. you go. Very good. We, we hit, hit that one out of the park. Uh, it's the only one I would drink. I don't, like, I go, we go anywhere and I'm like, this coffee sucks. Like once, what, I, 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 I for, forgive me because it is a curse when you buy this. Yeah. You taste it. It is so delicious. You'll never want to drink anything else again. I'm not, cause I was a huge um, pumpkin spice fan, but now I'm, I'm ready to kind of put I, that down. I had coffee here this later. morning. I don't know what it was, but I drank it black and I usually drink it with milk and sugar. I'm assuming I, I, it's your brand at your yeah, yeah, yeah. your, it your probably place. was Appalachian Nights. Stand your ground is a medium roast, and it's and it's supposed to have like the same flavor profile, so it's supposed to be very similar, but it'll be a little higher caffeine and medium. But yeah, I don't know, man. Like, you go to the website and it's always sold out, and so we told our distributor just like just do it, just make whatever. We can't keep it in stock. The bag really looks like what it looks like out there at night. It's wild. Like we're in Appalachia, you know. Mm -hmm. that's, that's right. Like you see those the mountains are a little darker than the dark sky behind them. It's or is great. it the sky that's darker? I can't the tell. Mountains yeah, when we are beautiful. Moving out here from Jersey and I look out my window and I see mountains. Man, yeah, the mountains are gorgeous. You uh Salt Lake City's better. You guys ever been to Salt Lake City? I've mm -hmm. never been to Utah. Oh man. Real mountains. It's, I've been to the Rockies. I mean, I've spent a yeah. bunch of time in Colorado. That's cool. But we got good mountains up here. There's covered in trees. You know, well, they're old tall. mountains. That's why they're soft and a little rounder. You know, they've been out here for a lot longer than the Rockies. They were spared from the flood. Well, yeah, and they're they're just they've been Partially. tamped. They've been tamped down. I heard someone describe the mountains in Salt Lake or in Utah that a panther set its paw down. Uh huh. Just that's oh, what Salt Lake. Like, yeah. What happened was the flood. I think this is what happened eleven thousand eight hundred years ago. This uh, this younger Dryas period. They, the comets hit North American glacier in addition to a bunch of other things. But there's a global flood crushed North America, created the Grand Canyon. looks like created the Grand Canyon. You can see all the striation marks when you zoom out on the map and watch. Oh, there's where it started. That's the erosion. And it dumps all this salt into Salt Lake. Right there, it just dumps all this salt. It hits this basin and leaves this salt basin behind yeah, it. Yeah, yeah. All right. Wow. Alan Cardinal says, Tim and Ian, can you wish Jill my mother happy birthday? She's your biggest fan. Happy birthday, Jill. Happy birthday, Jill. Thank you for watching the show. Big day. Happy birthday. Purple says, people are acting like there isn't one innocent person in Gaza. Well, that's an interesting conundrum. That's like if Sodom and Gomorrah. one that righteous the person thing. in Gaza, then they must spare it. Well, actually, God, you know, they had the whole negotiation. And right. God was like, you know, they, they got him down to 10. And it's like, yeah, if there's 10 good men. Got him to one. Yeah, but there, they, there was one. And the angels went. And they hung out with Lot. Right? They, they they pulled the good people from the city. And, and they then took the one guy out. They were right. like, we won't spare the city for one guy. We'll spare the guy, but not the city. Oh, right, 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 right. So they did not spare right, the yeah, city yeah, yeah. for one so guy. So if you can go in and get those righteous people out, I suppose biblically then it's fine? Is that the No, it's is? just, no, it's just, if if there's less than 10, <laughs> ah, <laughs> biblically. But there, there are innocent people But in there's, Gaza. of course, there many are, more. Yes. Um, of course there are. Yeah. 
I'm just going with the story. And Israel is probably right. doing more than any country in history to try and protect them. So Banana Watch super chatted, I think, one, two, three, no four, one five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. For Israel funded they Hamas. Say, Israel funded Hamas. Long term. Wait a minute. Say that again. Long range missile. Okay. So uh, Banana Watch said in numerous super chats, Israel funded Hamas. Israel funded Hamas. I, that I was told by Scott Horton. I don't know how, if it's true or not, but it, they, I heard that they built it to counter up oppose um the plo to to dis to like make the two-state solution more challenging for them and then they had like two enemies they hated each other could be wrong i don't know I, i've heard this but i've seen destiny go over this you know on his wikipedia as he's been criticized for and essentially some some people are arguing that what like that's the government over there and israel has to transfer aid and they stopped transferring it through the plo who would just transfer it to this other body and like money would go missing out on the way but like i i don't know like that's that's the that's the defense more defensible explanation that I've heard. Well, we you know we maybe it's like what we did with Iran and Iraq, you know, kept them at each other's throats too. It's just possible, yeah. Geopolitics. Devin Porter says, Tim, I'd love to help draw the coffee shops to flush out the general aesthetic and franchise design. I also offered to draw the display case for the Civil War flag, but I haven't heard back from SCNR or Ian. I'm Builder Guy 87. If you're interested, we likely will not have the Civil War flag because we can't uh, uh, we can't. Uh, uh, cover the liability for it. We cannot accept a loaner for a hundred multi, like several hundred thousand dollar object because our insurance companies are like, we will cancel you in two seconds because we're not going to assume that. And it's like, okay, well, we probably can't do that. Uh, as for the uh, coffee shops, we are all, we have already done everything. It's, everything's done. I can't say much about it because there's like laws or something, but uh, we are really, really close to the process and it's going to be fantastic. If you haven't already, you should like push this as a third place you know there's like that's the, that's, what, that's yeah. what it is that's so idea, the, yeah. one of the ideas is saturday morning cartoons where saturdays at like 6 a.m families bring their kids this the the the, the 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 shop will get catering kids can hang out on the tvs they're playing wholesome family friendly uh cartoons and educational mm -hmm. stuff the parents are networking with each other at our building in martinsburg on the second floor we have a private club for timcast elite members so if you're a member at 100 bucks a month when this opens, you'll have a key fob and you walk up there and go, Doop, and opens up and you can come hang out. There'll be hours. It'll probably be like, you know, nine to like 11 p.m. every day or something. And uh, there'll be drinks and snacks. And the 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 purpose of the hundred bucks a month, not we're not making profit off this. That's like, trust me, like having a podcast that reaches millions of people, there's way better ways to monetize. But it covers the cost of staff, food, drinks, games and everything. So we wanted, uh, we wanted to create a social club like they have in New York and Los Angeles and Hollywood and all that stuff where these liberal elites get together and then talk business. Trump's got his, of course, at Mar-a-Lago. We want ours for Appalachia, where the plumber can come and hang out and talk with his buddies who uh, one guy works at the post office and one guy's a mechanic. And then they can be like, did you hear what this a-hole over at City Hall is trying to do? <laughs> that organizing is how you win a culture war. What would be great, too, is a nice way to find a plumber. <laughs> what do you mean? <laughs> I mean, it's hard to find people who are going to come do stuff and fix your house. That's true. Have you used Public Square? <laughs> to find a plumber? Maybe, yeah. I don't know, I've tried Is yet. that a thing? Hopefully. Oh, let's, let's if not, try. a bunch of plumbers are signing up as we I speak. I was literally looking at T on Public Square right now. Listen, so. South, South Park has predicted once AI takes There's, over, those guys are going to be billionaires. Right, because so people don't know how to do stuff. <laughs> yep. <laughs> That's, exactly. I've been told that like as the computers take control or take start take over, it's the things that require manual dexterity that we'll still do. It's, you, remove, you remove everybody, you know, the, the, the people... To keep the world turning are the plumbers and the exterminators mm -hmm. and the mechanics. You remove them. Maintenance people. Yeah. They, garbage collectors. Handyman the services, keep... Charlestown. That easy. Yeah, there I'm checking go. it out right here. Nice. You know, you get, get rid of guys like me. Some, oh. people, some people might miss me for a week. No. <laughs> Com, but the world keeps turning. Comstop, Comstock Plumbing and Pump in Ransom. Okay. Shout This out. is amazing. Yeah. I, I, Public Square is so amazing. Was a great song. I'm so excited this thing exists. Yeah, really. Learn a trade. Yeah. My son was telling me the other day, he was like, maybe I want to, he, first he asked me, what are trades? And I told him and he was like, maybe I want to do that. Yeah. And I was like, for sure, you could do that. Definitely. And you can always like have passion projects on the side because he's also really into um, making music. So, yeah. man, if you're, if you're in a city like Chicago, New York or LA, you got to get public square. Yeah. Because I think it, Amazon's you, you, gonna try and buy them eventually, I bet, if they haven't already. Well, but why would no, they no, sell to Amazon? They're gonna offer them like a, a $10 billion, $50 billion to no something. Way. And no he'll way. be like, no, the, I, the, I have a feeling anyway. 
the value proposition of public square is that you know these people aren't crackpot a hole cultists. Yes, it's yeah, beyond that's cash. Like, that's like Amazon, no. Yeah. yeah, it's like you sell to Amazon. Dude, this is amazing. You go to Chicago and there's so many businesses. If you are in Chicago, New York, or LA, like you need to have this because in Chicago, in the belly of the beast of these Democrat strongholds, there are businesses that outright say, like, hey, man, we're with you. Mm -hmm. Here's a kombucha place on Public Square. That sounds good. You have to swear, like, that. you, you, have, to, you have to say, like, yes, I support, promise, yeah. I, promise Amer I support American values and the family and all that stuff. It's so cool. All right, all right I'm downloading it. I took the hint, Tim. <laughs> yeah, it's good. <laughs> they better hope the locals don't fight. I thought they were going to get boycotted. You can see that happening. You can see the backlash happening in those blue cities. Oh, wait. I'm you, just saying, you like. pledge you loved America. Now we're going to come out and yeah, pick it. Hun hundreds of thousands of uh, businesses in Chicago, and you can find what looks like a, cu a couple hundred businesses that have signed up for Public Square. And it's really kind of the way it should be. I don't think they should have to feel like to f they have to fall fly a flag to be like, hey, everyone in the world, they, right, they just, right. they just acknowledge it on a piece of paper in the back. That's all you need. They I acknowledge believe in this country. I believe in our rights, the Constitution, and family, and our values. That's awesome. Mm -hmm. It should be basic. It shouldn't be controversial at all. For us out here in West Virginia, it's pretty easy because you walk in, you're like, America, and they go, yeah, because you know I mean? because we're in MAGA country. Even Western Maryland is MAGA country. Yeah, I was saying we there, there's a bar in the Maryland uh, in the Maryland Panhandle in Western Maryland, and they had the Trump riding the Velociraptor with the machine gun or whatever. And I'm like, you don't you don't need you don't need you know they should be on public square, but we know out here. But like if you're in New York, you you could intentionally give your money to businesses that have said, I believe in this country and our values and all these things. And reject. It's like basically just saying no woke. No, no, right, right, right. That's rad. All right, all right. We'll read some more super chats. Okay, Ayub Matan says, "Man, Tim, have some diversity. Nothing but Zionists. Expect uh, except Ian. At least have some moderates. Ask the panel. Except Ian, if Isla Islam is inherently violent. Here's what I love about the the Isra Israel derangement syndrome. Okay, they call everyone Zionists. Like the the way the woke call people white supremacists." You're like, I think scheduling is important. You're a white supremacist. You go, uh, I actually don't care about Israel or the moral arguments with Israel-Palestine. I can understand why Israel went to war. You're a Zionist. It's like, okay. Like, I, I have no idea what you're talking yeah, about. Yeah, I, I acknowledge Israel's, well, right to exist. I mean, I, I acknowledge its right to exist in that de facto it exists. There's no denying that. And every human has a right to defend themselves. I'll go that far. I'm talking about Zionism. If, if you talk about... Do I support like the the creation of a ethno state in that? That's another if, conversation. If, I mean, so I the so really. I got people on Twitter, and prominent people, not like random accounts, saying that I'm a Zionist, and it's like my position is that the U.S. should cut all funding to Israel, and they're like Zionist, and I'm like, huh? If you go to my Twitter account, my profile says one word, Zionist. What does it mean? <laughs> what does it mean? I don't even know. I just know that it 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 upsets the squares. Isn't but, it originally just you think that the Jewish people should have a state? Yeah, I'm reading it now. It's a political movement for the establishment of a Jewish nation state in the area of Palestine since 1860. Right. So it's like calling someone a white supremacist. You're like, I don't have any strong opinions on that at all, and I don't think we should be involved or funding it. And like, well, then you're. Zionist. It was a political movement. Unless, Would that mean unless you think the only, for to many of these people, the only way to not be a Zionist is to argue that Israel should not exist. Right. Right, and I'm like, well, I don't, I'm not getting involved in your war, dude. Like, oh, like the I'm undoing. not gonna argue of Burma either. I'm not gonna talk it's about just, Tibet. It's the same reason I have a coffee cup with a rebel flag on it. It just upsets the uptight <laughs> squares. I wanna, I, I don't wanna undo the Israel. I want to bring the Jews and the Arabs all and the and the Muslims together to worship like Abraham, what we all come from. Like, let's acknowledge that together and go deeper. All right. Patriot American says, I've been going to Lancaster since I was a baby, and I had no clue that yayo came from a plant. I thought it was just heroin and weed that came from plants. The, ca the cacao plant? No, no. Yayo. It's a coca. Coca it's plant. Like coca. Yeah, not cacao. Coca. And in, in the mountains in Peru, they like the, the, in the Andes or whatever, they look like chew on yeah. coca leaves. I sucked on that. When I was like in Peru, go climbing around. Yeah, yeah. We, we take the the coca leaf. You put a little tobacco in it, just pure like sticky tobacco, and then you fold up the leaf and stick it up in your lip. That's suck some, on it for like twenty minutes. It's like Zen, right? It really, Ginger it was. Ginger McIsaac says the latest geographical evidence is an asteroid strike that smote Sodom and Gomorrah. There, an area that had fra uh, fractional glass just east of the Dead Sea area. You could look at any miracle in the Bible and they'll find a natural reason for it, like the parting of the Red Sea. There are everything, even the blood, how the Red Sea turned red. 
Oh, Iron. That happens. There's like algae yeah. in that area. Yeah, yeah. yeah. You it. see that. 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 that it's. It's like it's, naturalist explanations from the Bible. Right. Like, yeah. But and that's fine because this. This is the question. Like, when when uh, when miracles are obvious, they're obvious. But if God takes action, does he not take action through the natural means of the universe? In which exactly. He created? Yeah, exactly. I, yeah. Think, I think God should break microscopes because they'd be cheating. Because the water turns red, we're like, it's blood. And then when you get a microscope, you're like, oh, it's a bacteria. I don't think that... it's cheating. Yeah. No, I it's think cheating it's like... for us to figure it out. Like, it's nah. better to like, oh, scare Oh, because they them. say we'll run red with blood. Yeah. Is that specific? They say with blood yeah, in the Bible? Uh, it's like, he, and you know, maybe he just put algae there. So he's like, yeah, I didn't want to bring blood. And now you guys are like, calling me out like you know he should just ban microscopes you make a good argument that ban we're not in the end times i appreciate it but it's you know it i don't think it's a coincidence that moses or charlton heston whoever it was says these things are going to happen and then these natural no. things we'll happen get, to make them happen we'll get one we'll get one more firstborn. in bud guy says maybe god was upset since trump is selling his own version of the bible isn't it just the King James version of the Bible? Oh. But it's like a Trump version, isn't it? What? It's like it's like a oh, Trump yeah. brand. But it's just got like Trump branding on it. Is that what it is? Uh, yeah, I think it's a Bible with Trump branding. Was Trump smote for selling yeah. a Trump Bible? It sounds like a warning. Trump will yeah. sell anything. Yeah. <laughs> wow. And he's good Bro, at it. Trump, like, that's why he'll sell anything because he keeps icons, doing it. They'll do that for you after you're gone, man. You don't have to force that yet. That's a good comment. That's Live a, your best life. Yeah, brother. Profiting off the Bible. Bible. How, he is profiting off the Bible. How big is the Trump name in comparison to like the Holy Bible? <laughs> like the uh, Holy so, Trump. Because you see, you see how he signs so the, his name. It takes half the page. So the problem is, normally when you search for a product, you get the product. But because all I'm getting is news, it's yeah. all just news. It's so just it's like, hate. how do I know this even exists? It's well, the be, AP says it costs fifty nine ninety nine. Sure. And how do I find it? Yeah, I got no idea. You know where you could find it? Maybe it's on Trump Public Square. Store? Public Square for sure. <laughs> Maybe the Trump store? Maybe oh, I didn't know he had a store. Maybe with shipping, the reason why he got the earthquake is with shipping, it works out to like 66, 66, <laughs> like that's the problem he has. Dude, I don't I don't know how you actually buy the Trump Bible. I don't either. I'm it's all just news. It. You Google it, nothing but news comes up. Mother Jones is unhappy about it. All right. If I'd known this when we were talking about the earthquake. Mother Jones? Yeah, hey, you know that magazine. I'm just Bedminster. joking around here, you know. <laughs> <laughs> Bro, I'm not even like religious or spiritual that much. Like I'm really literally deep down like a common sense kind of guy. But if he put his name on a Bible and I don't think he did. Okay, it, maybe I not. think it's called the God Bless the USA Bible. It's like, yeah. That's what it says. It's on more it. Lee Greenwood actually yeah. than Trump, if right. I remember correctly. Oh. Yeah, it's a, it is. You're right. Yeah. Lee Greenwood. And it says God Bless the USA Bible. Yeah. That's not. Why is that a bad thing? Because like, they're just Trump. trying to. Yeah, because it's yeah. Trump. Yeah. But he's going right. to sell anything. He's got legal fees. Right. All right, everybody, the if you US haven't already, would you kindly button? smash that like button, subscribe to the channel, share the show with your friends, head over to TimCast.com, click join us to become a member and support our work. I think sometimes if I say it faster, it'll convince more people to do it. Uh, become a member at TimCast.com. You can follow the show at TimCast IRL. You can follow me personally at TimCast. John, do you want to shout anything out? I've uh, just uh, had a great time. I appreciate you guys inviting me. This is a blast. Thank you. Nice uh, meeting you all, too. I want to shout out Nuance Bro, love you buddy, and I love you Tony Ortiz, the current Revolt Texas Paper of Record, my best friends in the whole world. I, uh, I'd, I'd like to shout out the Post Millennial. You can come check out what we're doing at thepostmillennial.com and also Human Events. You can see what we've got going on at humanevents.com. And I am a member of TimCast, so oh, you, you all should uh, jump in and do that. Oh, I thought you meant like you got hired by the company for a second. No, I I, I pay my subscription. Yeah. <laughs> um, I'm Ian Crossland, so follow me at Ian Crossland. That's usually my social media name. And John, people are going to follow you at Nolte NC on at Nolte NC. Can, they can see me. I write uh, about 15 pieces a week at Breitbart. I wrote a novel called Borrowed Time. If people want to check that out, it's getting great reviews on on Amazon. Of course, the mainstream media ignored me. What's it about? Like in 10 seconds, what's it about? It's uh, it's about a guy who lives forever. He's immortal, but he's a normal guy. He's not a Dracula or a superhero or anything. And um, it just takes him through to the end of the world. And it it's a guy- Oh, I like this story. 10,000 years old, uh, uh, borrowed time. Mm -hmm. And he could look at our culture from- you know, a perspective we can't. Oh, that's awesome. That sounds a lot like Ishmael, that book that Alex Jones quotes about the gorilla, whose psychic gorilla is like, I'm a gorilla. That's awesome. <laughs> um, and it's N-O-L-T-E-N-C. N-O-L-T-E-N-C. And it does say Zionist on your profile. It's impressive. It does. Yes, it does. Good to see you, man. <laughs> Bye, everyone. And I'm Serge. I hope you guys have a good weekend. Catch you later. We'll see you all throughout the weekend with clips, but we'll be back. we will be back Monday for Clips Day. <laughs>